All right, lads, we're back again. First off, Happy New Year. We're in 2023 now. I hope you didn't make any crazy fucking New Year's resolutions that you're not really going to follow through with. I'd hope that, yeah, you're just building up that foundation. You know what needs to be done. You know, you're working on your foundational fitness. You're developing your own boundaries, your personality. You're doing more of the things that you like. You actually internally enjoy you know, the things and you're moving towards the person that you internally want to be. You know, you're not so much taking massive amounts of fucking like impressions and shit from Instagram and you're not letting someone else decide for you who you want to be. You're focusing more on becoming the best version of you. I know that it sounds really fucking like dumb. You know, it sounds very like, I don't know, feel good to say that you want to become the best version of who you are. But that's actually your strength. You know, what's your cheat code? You can never be me. You know, you can't be a version of me. You can only be, you only have the tools that you have. You know, like I've said before, some guys have the very attractive looking. You know, other guys can be really good socially, you know, just straight off the bat. Some guys have good genetics. When they go in the gym, they just pick up exercise easy. They put on weight easy. They gain easy. And some people don't. You know, some people will be starting out from a much lower position. You know, some people don't have the genetic advantages, but they might be very intelligent. You know, they don't have the physical advantages, but they pick things up fast, like mentally. So they can understand like, you know, situations and understand like systems and things like that. So they're able to develop the discipline to resist them, to, you know, log their progress at the gym and actually make good progress. Because all of that shit matters. You know, the, the guy who, who walks around with the notepad and pen and takes it to the gym, but he at least records his lifts. He's generally the guy that can become very exceptional at the gym. He has that like meticulous discipline. I've never been that guy. You know, I don't fucking like take all that shit to the gym. It's hard for me to track my lifts. I generally just go as heavy as possible for the last like four or five reps. I'll do like one set at the end, which is the max. And I'll always do that. You know, I think that's important. I think you got to max out. Sometimes you're injured, you know, or sometimes you're a bit sore, a bit tender, and then you don't max out. But I try to max out on at least like two or three of the big lifts every week, probably every week or two. You know, a squat at least one week. I'll try and squat very heavy. I was squatting the 140 kilos. So what's that, about 320 for four reps the other day. So that's, you know, it's strong. You know, I was benching... 260 for four, you know, and on the flat bench, no spot. So it's, yeah, it's, it's quite strong. You know, they're, they're not my best lifts. My best lifts were probably another 10 or 20% off the top of that. But I was probably a lot heavier, you know, it would have been about 220 pounds. Now I'm probably like 195, maybe 200. So yeah, it's, it's very like weight dependent. You know, you might be 160 pounds. So if you're benching 180, that's still, you know, quite good. It's very much matters to how much you weigh. You know, if someone else might be 260 pounds and then they're benching their body weight again. So it's, it's generally matters how much you, it is relative to your weight. You know, you can't have the guy who's might be like thin boned at 140 pounds and then beat him up. If he can only bench like 180 or 160, it's still quite impressive for his size. You know, that sort of thing does matter. And then when you box or whatever, that's why they have weight classes. Cause if you're like 160 pounds and then you even go against someone who's 200 and they might not be very good, but you can feel it. Like you feel the force and the power is a lot fucking different. Height really matters too with boxing. You know, if I have a box or like spar someone and they're like 6'6 six, six or 6'4, six, even if they're a similar weight to me, they fucking hit hard. And the reach advantage is very extremely difficult to overcome. They can hit you pretty much from anywhere and it's hard to get distance right. So yeah, all that shit matters and all that. It's just genetics. You know, some people have more advantages than others, but you can only, yeah, that's why I say you can only be the best version of you. You know, you can't fucking like beat yourself up if you like an ectomorph with thin bones and small, like it's hard for you to put on mass. You know, you're somewhat like clipped of how big you can get, but that doesn't mean that you can't like constantly improve and be better than, than you were yesterday. You know, I think a New Year's resolution, it has to be realistic. It's not about like, you know, maybe you're, like I've said before, maybe you're an ectomorph at 130 pounds. You know, you're pretty much riding in off the computer, like turning up to the gym. You don't need to like, you know, watch the, the bodybuilders that are on Instagram, you know, shooting up massive amounts of trend. And you don't need to look at that and be like, you know, that's just too far. That's the thing. Like if you're starting out from a quite a low position and you're looking at the extreme opposite, 
it's not really motivating. You know, it can be quite the opposite because you think like that's just too far. Like it's it's such a it's like you're at the bottom of the mountain and you're like listening to guys who are at the very top and it took them like many years to get there. You don't need to fucking like you know worry about that too much. You just more and less need to look at the guy who's a bit above you and aim at that, and then just keep going up in increments like a ladder. That's generally how you'll get there. You know you won't get there being demotivated by the other extreme. And I've got a bit of a fucking cold coming on. I can only feel it. So my voice is fucking shitting out. <clears throat> it's this fucking apartment aircon. It's really sporadic. That night it seems to come on really fucking cold. And then in the day it's kind of like almost warm. So I need to get the technician in to stop fucking around here and fix it up. But yeah, I've got a, I got a ton of questions. So of course, Happy New Year, like I said. I think this year can be fucking better than the last. You know, it can be much better for all of us. I think that I have a bunch of goals this year that I want to knock out. You know, the markets are shit. Like the economy in general is crap. You know, all businesses, including mine, are like on a reduced fucking revenue. But yeah, I find that the guys who expand during like recessions or expand during down, downtime, a lot of people will go broke or they'll be demotivated. You know, because it's going to be a slow year and it's probably going to be a slow few years from here, like two years. So now's the time to ramp it up and take more market share. You know, ads and things like that will get cheaper. People will leave the fucking like industries that were making money. Like I know car salesmen or like real estate agents or like watch dealers were making hectic fucking profits after COVID. And now all of that's going to slow down. You know, it's going to fucking like be slower. But so a lot of the people who are only in it for the quick money will fuck off. And if you're a guy in the other field, like you can ramp up and take more market share now. <coughs> you can, and then when the market gets good again, everyone wants to return, but you've now built a customer and like a amount of loyalty. When people see you suffering alongside them, running a business, they're the ones that remember. Like they, they remember that like you were doing the hard things with them. So now they're going to become more loyal than the guy who just shows up when the markets or everything's good and then he's like, yeah, you know, I'll sell you shit now. You know, people see that more for what it is. They don't really have the rapport with that person. So it's a good time to absorb more market share and learn now. There's not a good time to be making any drastic moves, you know, or putting like getting in debt and shit like that. <clears throat> Unless the deal adds up and it probably doesn't in this sort of fucking climate. But I'll start out with the questions. I got a question based on my TikToks, actually. I got a question to start with. I'll do a bunch of questions on women first, and then we'll move into business. But yeah, I got a question based on my red flags with women. I put a post up on TikTok and it's went like, you know, somewhat viral already. It was up, been up for about a day. And it's my red flags of women. And of course, a lot of women are essentially butthurt. But it's always the same, you know, the people that get upset are the people that are already disqualified. You know, it's like, you'll see the comments and it'll be like, you know, these blue haired, like out of shape women or women that are like, you know, got two kids or something like that. And the ex, the baby daddy's a fucking loser. doesn't like pay any child support or like isn't a positive in their life. So they're waiting for like the next sucker to come in. So when you kind of blow the lid off their little like scam, it fucking like pisses them off you know they're only like on there replying because they're triggered they're trying to bury the message they see it gaining traction and they're like fuck like i have to get on damage control here you know my like little rot is almost over and that's the game you know like that's the only reason i'm on here i've had so many guys message me guys that i know guys that i even like and they're like why are you like lifting the lid on the game like why are you essentially like teaching people the game like, why are you dropping so much dime on people that they're essentially going to learn how the game is played? I'm like the Wizard of Oz and where he, like, fucking, like, gets the curtain pulled on him. I'm showing you how fucking life really is. Like, I'm showing you how a lot of the shit is because I've seen it. And not only that, I've, like, fucking lived through it. <clears throat> so when I talk about these red flags and guys, I say it as though I'm the guy that, like, if your ex has been with me and you're now... Like, if your girl's now with me and she was my ex... Like, you'd be, you'd be fucking crazy. Like, you know, it's 
she's used to her life and her lifestyle and like a fucking like you know exciting time and like you know toxic times so now if someone like you jumps in and is like yeah i'm gonna save her or like i'm gonna fucking like turn it around like you're gonna have to overdo a lot of programming you know she's still gonna be fucking thinking of me it's just the game you know that's the way it goes like you probably can't match the lifestyle or like the excitement or, or my fucking mind so it is exciting you know i'm multi-millionaire i can do fucking anything and when things are good, they're good. And when they're bad, they're bad. So it's very much like a roller coaster. And that's addictive. So when they get off that, they think that they want the stable guy now. But they miss the roller coaster. It's, you know, it's very emotionally, like, satisfying. It's heightening of emotions. You know, it's up and it's down. So when I say shit, like, you know, the, they are red flags. Like, you wouldn't date her ex if her ex was a criminal. If her ex fucking did all this, like, DV shit. I know that that's, like, been me in the past that's i'm just saying the the truth you know i'm not saying like you know that i'm the perfect fucking guy for the perfect ex to have you know i know that i'm only for a very specific girl but i have fucking beautiful women around me you know not not like these fucking trolls in the comments beautiful girls and I, i've already told guys like generally what what i go for i think i like a really beautiful girl like a fucking trophy girl you know she's got to be very attractive She's got to be very feminine. She's got to look good. She's got to be like, you know, p pleasant to be around. She's got to be positive. She can't just run around saying a bunch of negative garbage and like spewing drama and trash, like toxicity out to the world. She's got to be pleasant as a big one. She's got to do things like beyond just have sex. Like every chick thinks that because they have a pussy that, that that's like enough. And it's not because every chick has one and like it's fucking like a diamond dozen. You know, it's once you can get sex pretty much on demand, it's not really that like fucking, it's not a massive thing. You know, it's you know, like I've said before, you're not the hungry man running at the running around the restaurant anymore. So when someone's like, yeah, I've got a tomahawk steak here. You're like, yeah, I like tomahawk steaks, but I'm not really that hungry. Like I'll still eat, I guess, but I'm not fucking starving anymore. You know, I'm like, what else do you have? And with women, it's very much like that. You know, it's, it's not really so much about the sex. It's about like the sex is a given. You know, sex is on the menu. It's it's about the other shit too. She's got to be pleasant. She's got to add to your life. She's got to be like protective, like spiritually. Like protect, like, you know, it's that you're out earning money and there's people like trying to fuck you over. It doesn't matter if you might not be like, you know, selling dope or being a criminal or something like that. But you can still go to work and people like generally uh, it's a, a competing with you. You know, it's, it's a competitive environment out there. You're essentially taking resources off people that like want them as well. So to a degree, it is player versus player out there. So, you know, you want to come home and your girl or like, you know, your girl's talking to you during the day and she's supportive. You know, she's not like starting issues. She's not starting drama. She's not being fucking like, you know, toxic or being annoying or like talking about some crap that she's gone through with her ex or some bullshit, you know, or like, oh, my baby daddy's doing this or this crap or all this garbage. You know, that's all crap. And when I talk about red flags in women, like I know guys will say there's other red flags too, but... I don't consider like weight. Weight is just a given. Like, you know, I would, ne I would never even entertain a fat chick or a chick who was out of shape. So when I say like the red flags, they're only, I just assume that the chick turns up in shape. You know, I would never even like kiss a whale. You know, I just wouldn't do it. I never have. Like I, I never really have even since I was fucking like 18, like 20, 21. I don't, looks have always mattered to me. You know, and even though like they've mattered to me, but they've consistently gotten higher as my own values increased, but I would still like rather jerk off than be with like some fucking blimp. You know, I would never do that. That's disgusting to me. You know, it's like lowering your standards to like where you just fucking fuck anything. And it just encourages women like that to like not change. The only reason these beasts can get in the comments and talk garbage is because you guys will still fuck them. Like someone will still fuck them, you know, so that they don't have to change. Some guy somewhere will still entertain them. You know, it's, it would be a completely different world if you guys just didn't fuck chicks that were like, you know, over like 20 pounds over their fucking like optimal weight. You know, if you guys just didn't even really acknowledge them when they walked around. See, I, I don't. You know, I'll be nice enough to them if I have to be. Like if it's a, a fucking like, you know, like at a shop or something when I see them. But I'll never employ one. 
I would never like, you know, do business with a fat person. I would never like employ a fat person to work for me. I would never like, you know, encourage them to be a fucking pig <laughs> running around. Because how can I trust someone to do a job if they can't even control their diet? Like, that's the basics. A lot of that crap with, like, women and shit like that, they're presenting it, like, below the minimum standard. So, I have to get a fucking lozenge on my voice. still make it through i'll fuck my voice up but i said i'd do it i said i'd have it up in 24 hours so let's let's get it going but yeah so these beasts are presented below the minimum standard like they're just present presenting a wreck to the world like they're fucking turning up out of shape with a bad attitude pink hair and someone somewhere still says that's okay you know but that would never be me i wouldn't acknowledge them I wouldn't even acknowledge him in public unless I had to. You know, it's it's very much crap. You know, it's very, like, artificial that you're nice to people and, like, encourage them to fuck their life up even further. You know, it's... So when it's red flags for women, it's more like the ones that I've said. So I would never date a girl if she's, like, been with their ex and her ex was a criminal. See, I know, I know girls where, like, their ex is a criminal, he's a major criminal, and that's different. Like, it's, it's not the same if, like, you know, she's dating someone who's fucking, like, you know, a multi-millionaire from that sort of lifestyle and she's, like, you know, kept her mouth shut and she's used to, like, being around that sort of environment. That actually isn't a bad thing for me. Like, that doesn't really worry me because it's tears. Like, there's different levels. She's, like, obviously loyal. She shut her mouth. Like, she, and then she's from, like, they're broken up for whatever reason. He's not in jail, but, like, you know, you know that he's, he's doing shit. But then she like shows up on the dating market and that makes sense because obviously she's going to like look after herself because the guy's going to have high standards for it and she's going to understand the game. So for me, that works out. But a lot of the girls, they're just dating their ex as a fucking loser. You know, he's some fucking like petty criminal and just some fucking like pissant and he's doing a bunch of bullshit crime. And guys like that generally have nothing to lose and nothing to lose people. You don't want to have fucking anything to do with them. You know, they generally drag everyone down that's around them. Guys will think that it's something to brag about, to have nothing to lose. Like it's something to brag about, to be a fucking bomb. Yeah, that's dumb. Nothing to lose, people. It's like the explosive guy who's just like strapped like dynamite to his chest and he doesn't care what happens to him. But he blows himself up and everyone around him. Friends, fucking everyone. You know, it's generally the guy who can't like keep friendships, relationships. Like he has pretty much nothing to offer. That's why he has nothing to lose because nothing is stuck to him because he's just like a shit person. And that's generally the kind of guy that these girls like have as an ex. So, you know, you, if you're you, like a normal guy, you would expect things like, you know, the ex shows up or like, you know, starts messaging you or abuses you and like, you know, he's like fucking around with her, like still messaging her and shit like that. And she's still like holding out that that sort of excitement or like the guy's going to change or something like that. Like he generally like lingers in the background because people like that are kind of like a stain. Like they don't really have much going on. So they do linger in the background for a lot of that shit. So yeah, of course, like no girl whose ex is a criminal. That's one. No girl who like does drugs. That's of course going to be number two. And I don't mean like doing drugs, like, you know, maybe she does drugs with you like every few months. she try like Coke or like MDMA or something like that. And that probably makes sense. It's the same as when I say taking the girl to the club. Like if the girl's going to the club every week, that's, it's very different if it's your girl and you take her to the club and maybe you go like once a month or something like that. That makes a lot of sense. I mean the girl who goes to the club on her own like every week and she kind of like bop, bops around table to table and like all of her friends are trash bags. And they're all kind of like known as fucking like table hoppers. And they just jump from like one table to the next. And they're kind of like around shit that's pretty immoral. You know, that really just teaches women like bad behavior and immoral behavior. And the thing with women, like no guy wants to walk around with some club rat. 
you know, some girl who's been drilled by like fucking 10 guys in the club over like, you know, a one or two year period. So now he has to walk around with that girl and like be embarrassed. You know, it's, it's not really anything that any guy like fantasizes about or wants to be involved with. You know, it's, that girl's really like destroying her like future because any guy who's worth shit is going to be like, I don't want to be involved with that. Like, I don't want to work or walk around with her. She's embarrassing me. She's like, you know, it's, it's embarrassing to be seen with a girl when you know, like there's guys in the club that have like fucking blown on her face and some guy in the club probably has like photos of her and shit. You know, so yeah, all that shit's embarrassing. All this stuff like that women do where they're like, you know, run their body count up and all that sort of stuff. That just enable that just <clears throat> means that they're stuck to be short time girls. You know, and a short time girl you can still have fun with, you can still have sex with, you can still like, you know, she might be a cool chick to hang around with, you know, she might be like okay to have around you, you know, she's fun or like she's like sex is good or she's funny and all this other crap. But no guy can ever like take a girl like that serious. You know, it's her past and her actions have pretty much derailed her future from having any guy who like, you know, is kind of worse shit. Which is kind of difficult for her because then she gets used to a certain lifestyle and a certain type of guy. Because guys that are like higher levels will still fuck her. And they'll still like, you know, fuck her out of the club and things like that. And like take her home and, you know, promise her the world essentially. But then like just use her as a blow rag again and again and again. And then that girl, like as she gets older, she thinks that like, oh, I, I just missed my chance with those guys by like a centimeter each time. When really the guys didn't really want anything long term with her. It would have, that's what they would have wanted. Like this would have asked for so then she settles for some like blue pill beta to like provide for her and fucking like, you know, essentially like be kind of like a whipping boy. And then as time goes by, like as she gets older, she still fantasizes about that sort of life and the guy who would pretty much like fuck her in the club toilets and the guy who was exciting and interesting and had money and all this other shit. But then some fucking like simps essentially locked her down and like she might have a kid with him or something and then she still like tries to relive that sort of life and makes his life difficult. He thinks that like, you know, I've seen it many times where guys like think that they've pretty much like landed the fucking big bass in their boat and then they're, they're walking around with some chick and I'm just like, fuck man, like, you know, I've fucking like pretty much blown in that chick's hair like multiple times. You know, I'm not, I'm not really treated her that good. Like, pretty much disrespected her in the bedroom. And now this guy's walking around with her as though it's some trophy. And I'm like, it's pretty much walking around with, like, a, a 20th place trophy. And he's like this. Woo! And it's pretty fucking embarrassing. You know, it's... It's embarrassing because, like, you know, that she's, like, used goods by a lot of guys. And guys on the higher end don't want that. You know, it's... It's very like fucking Western concept that you can't be possessive of your girl. You know, it's a Western idea that you can't be like, this is my girl. Like, you know, she pretty much like belongs to me. That's a fucking like pretty Western concept that to say that is like toxic or whatever. You know, if any girl, you say that to your girl and she thinks that you're like toxic or something like that, you need to fuck her off. Like you'll, you'll realize why later. You know, that sort of. I've had women where they are pretty much like extreme feminists before they meet me and then they fall into line. You know, there's always a woman who, and I've had women before where they were like fucking feminists with me and then like, you know, saying like, oh, you can't like say that, you know, I belong to you or like, you can't, you know, like do this or do that. And then they meet a guy after me and then they fall into his line. You know, it's, women are generally led by the strongest person that they perceive in their life. For some, it'll be their dad, their brother. For some, it'll be like, you know, their, their like fucking boyfriend, but others it'll be like their boss and things like that. You know, it's, it's generally like a respect thing with women. You know, if women respect you, they'll generally like, you know, still fuck you. It doesn't matter if, you know, it's an ex. If she still respects you, even if she doesn't really like you that much, she'll still fuck you. Like she'll still hold a, a like candle for you. That's why the toxic fuck boy can still be respected. Because he didn't really give her the closure. You know, if you just fuck a chick off or like fuck her and never contact her again. It's kind of like a, a massive sign of like higher, a display of higher value. You know, it's like she didn't measure up. So she's always going to be thinking of like w what went wrong. Like was I that fucking like garbage? <laughs> was I a shit fuck or was I like, you know, just incredibly low value or is there something wrong with me? That's why he never even like contacted me or never even blew me off. He essentially just like pretty much told me next or blocked her or something. 
So yeah, that's the fuckboy sort of logic does, like, you know, leave an imprint on women. But you can't do that forever. You know, you eventually have to like, it's like a lot of you guys don't realize, like, sometimes you're driving a Lamborghini and you just are, you know, like I'm driving a Mercedes, AMG GT, like I'm driving that around. And if I keep trading, so that's just what I drive, like I'm driving that every day. Sometimes if I went to like, you know, just kept trading, 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 I'm on Tinder, I'm just trading my car for a new one all the time. Sometimes you can actually go down, you know, where you had uh, essentially a Ferrari and then you've just kept trading it, trading it, trading it into your 30s. And now you're stuck with a court like Toyota. You know, it's it's not always like the concept that you can just keep trading up. Sometimes you meet a girl and that and she is fucking like, you know, quite special. But a lot of you guys are conditioned only to really to think like sexually. You know, you're hypersexualized, but also like you only think with your cock. Like you don't really have any fucking like I did the the thing on like the video on fucking self awareness. You know, the video on self-awareness is brilliant because it helps you to identify who you are and what you want. You know, I saw a lot of the fucking dweebs in the comment section. Some fucking loser saying that he wants to fight me as an anon. It's pretty fucking embarrassing. You know, and then I uh, saw like guys saying like, oh yeah, you fucking had a DV or like you, you know, what, what you did to this fucking ex of yours or whatever. I admit that. You know, I've never sat back and hid from it. There's an exact reason why I use my full name on here. I essentially have come here to present as a guy who has a past. You know, I don't think that just because you have a past that like it disqualifies all your value. You know, I know there are guys out here who think like, you know, maybe they've done something in their past that they weren't proud of or like something happened in their past that like, you know, this might not, 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 not be proud of it, but they think that like it's disqualified their whole future. And that's bullshit. You know, just because someone might be like an addict or something like that even now. That doesn't mean that in like 10 years time that they can't be a completely different person. The person who's been through the fucking like, you know, the wars essentially, like hell, like he's walked through it and come out the other side. That's the guy that I want to fucking talk to. That's the guy that I want to fucking learn from. That's what so much what's wrong with the church. Because it's this guys that have no fucking like life experience. They're trying to be perfect. You know, they're trying to like virtue signal or like, you know, they have no experience. You know, it's essentially the blind leading the blind based off a book. And it just becomes like who can virtue signal the hardest. You know, just because like these fucking like anons or someone like that points their fingers at me, I don't know who they are. You know, if they were to lay their life next to mine, I'm going to imagine that one is completely eclipses the other. It's probably some fucking like anon hiding in mummy's basement. Can't even show his face online. Like, you know, it's... If you can't even take your mask off, like, you can't even take the Anon fucking, like, you know, anime fucking, like, face off, like, the image, like, you're fucking, like, miles behind me, you know? You can't even face the world yet. How can you expect, like, you know, to stand there and be like, oh, I'm fucking, like, so-and-so, and here I am, you know, I want to change, I want to improve. Being an Anon just, like, delays your development completely until you face the world as you are. You know, it's... People are anons online because they have problems. You know, it's like, I used to be an anon. I used to play professional Counter-Strike for fucking years. Played since beta three to 1.4. I was fucking amazing at it, but there was no money in it. And I used to be an anon because I used to be fat. And I was like 250 pounds or so. So I know what it's like to be like 19 fat anon. But back then we didn't really have places where we could talk shit. It's kind of like IRC and places like that, but people didn't really get on there and talk garbage. And it wasn't until I found the bodybuilding forums that I, like, changed my own life. You know, it's not until then that I really realised, like, started to learn from there, learn from the men on there that would talk even in, like, MISC and things like that. I'd be learning, like, to habits and things that people were talking about in there and, like, the gym and all this sort of stuff. It was good. From there, I learned, like, you know, to read, like, POA books, and then I moved into, like, complicated psychology manuals and things like that, like sociology fucking textbooks and things like that. So it wasn't until I essentially took my own mask off and put myself up on the bodybuilding forum board, and I, like, owned my fatness and showed my whole fucking face and body, and then I said, like, here I am. And it wasn't until I, like, you know, it was just therapeutic to be like, you know, this is where I am. Like, this is where I stand. 
And then you'd have people like still troll you and shit and be like, look at this fat fuck, like, you know, he's not going to make it. But a lot of that, like, is inspiration. My most, it's, like, for me, it's very difficult to be inspired to do shit when you're a millionaire. Like, you know, I'm a multi-millionaire, I can do whatever the fuck I want. I've got, like, two and a bit mil in the bank today. I've probably, like, 2.3 in the bank today, just in cash. I could essentially, like I've said before, go to Mykonos, Ibiza, have two girls every time, every night. Different girls, fucking, like, model tier. You know, it's it's different, right? I can go to Monaco, do whatever the fuck I want. Go on a yacht. Go to Dubai and see the lads. You know, it's, it's different for me. So it's harder to stay motivated, but what motivates me is when I fucking, like, low... Well, all my shit's managed. My YouTube's managed. I don't fucking like do all the posting on there. I don't have to do any of that. My clips is managed. SRB Speaks is all managed. But when I hear about the comments, like guys are talking garbage on there, that actually motivates me. That inspires me. Because I know that like they're trying to new to the message. Kind of like the women are. When you're a peasant, no one attacks you. You know, no one attacks the peasant because the it's pointless. You know, it's it's if you're on here and you're saying things that aren't going to gain traction, no one will jump on and attack you and start like, you know, bringing your credibility into question. They only do that because it's hit a nerve. You know, it's, it's gaining speed. It's gaining traction. Like they now have to address it. They can't hide from it anymore. I know one day I'll jump on here and some fucking like media campaign will be some massive hate blitz against me. And then they'll be like, you know, digging into my past and like mention all that shit. And there'll be like an article or something published again. And they only do that because it's like gaining power. You know, it's, it's gaining like influence. So they have to dig into your character and credibility from like fucking almost like 10 years ago and start being like, oh, did you know when, when he was like in his late 20s, he did this? And by then I'll be like fucking 38, you know, so it'll be 10 years old. But that's the game. You know, it's, it's similar to the blue haired woman who jumps online when you say like all the red flags that you wouldn't like. And she sees pretty much everyone that hits her and she's like, yeah, but uh, you're a criminal, or like you're this or you're that, or you're gay or something like that. You know, it's, they have to try and attack the messenger because they can't attack the message. You know, it's very similar to what happens with Tate. You know, if they can't, the message is too strong. They have to try and like go for the character assassination of our character assassination of the messenger himself, you know, because then it's sort of like, you know, weakens the message in a way if they're like it was said from a person who is of low character. But the message itself, they couldn't really go after because they're uh, going to find a lot of people that are like, actually, it's true. You know, it's... I've said it before. And just with guys, like, in general, how the press and, like, you know, the media and, like, even the police do things, just because they remove a man's tongue, like, essentially cancel him or, like, you know, assassinate his character or something like that, that doesn't mean that the message himself, like the message itself wasn't true. You know, it doesn't mean to me, like I, I have the self-awareness, I can, and the critical thinking, so I can see around like why they do shit. You know, I can see their motive. So that's why critical thinking and self-awareness are extremely important. You know, it's, it's just a big thing. You know, you don't want to be someone who doesn't think and just gets all their information from the press or like, you know, shock clips and things like that, because it's dangerous like you know not everyone's going to be like me trying to like just tell you fucking like facts you know I, I have no like invested interest in bullshitting you I'm not selling any products courses I'm not trying to like you know fuck your life up I'm just telling you shit that I've seen from my own experience and the reason why I'm on here telling people is because when I was young like I was fucking young the internet wasn't really a big thing we didn't have it until I was probably like 18 or so and even then it was like dial up it was pretty slow and, and the it was like IRC and a couple of websites. There wasn't like massive amounts. There was no YouTube or any of that shit. So it was, a lot of the information was difficult to get. The gym stuff, it was a lot of bro science, specifically around steroids or like, you know, even exercises themselves. Like people were kind of figuring it out themselves. They had that like the Wheeler guy, who's the guy that was weirder. Is it? The guy that was training Arnie and he had like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger had his own book around that time. But, yeah, there wasn't like, like it is now. We can just jump on YouTube and essentially search and find whatever you want at at least like a pretty high level of information. And my dad was sick when I was young. You know, he was incredibly sick. And I was a fat kid. We I went to eight schools in like, you know, eight or nine years. 
So I essentially was a new guy every day, like every year I'd be at least at like a new school. So I didn't really know shit, you know, I didn't know anything. What I knew I pretty much like had to learn myself, get online. And then since then I've lived a very interesting life. It's all the shit that I've seen, you know, if I talk about something, it's not like it's from a personal experience. You know, it's not something that I just read in some fucking book or heard from some fucking other like YouTuber or something like that. It's shit that I've seen myself or used myself or like gone through myself. You know, it's, it's just like learned wisdom. Shit that I've had, yeah, pretty much gone through or like had to suffer to get. You know, that's the best wisdom because I can tell you and you don't have to go through the shit that I had to go through to get it. You know, so that's my ultimate goal. You know, that. I can help guys, specifically guys if they're younger. Not necessarily like, you know, I can still help older guys too, but I just hope they learn shit earlier because the earlier you learn it, the more you can like change. Your trajectory can be higher. But of course, if you're in your 40s, 50s, or even 60s, it's still worth knowing. You know, it's a, it might just, it might be things that you've already gone through or like already sort of experienced yourself. But sometimes it is that like other person saying it to you that reinforces like your own ideas or maybe you had the idea but like it was just slightly a few pieces were missing and then you hear it from me and you're like actually yeah that's I've, I've had that thought myself or I've been through that or that's something that I've seen so yeah it, it's that's my goal you know it's not on here to be fucking like extremely controversial or like outrage people or piss people off but often the truth does annoy people you know it, it does piss people off because the truth is in itself isolating, you know, it's, the truth to me is based around being direct and that does hurt people's feelings. You know, it's the truth based around telling people if they're fat, that they are fat. You know, it's the truth based around just telling people where they stand and showing them like essentially bringing out a mirror and just showing them who they are and where they stand, you know, and, and that's, yeah, that's the most important thing. Cause then they can change or they can not. But they'll, when they get older, they can look back and be like, fuck, well, that guy, like, he, he gave me my opportunity to change. And I didn't grab it with both hands and fucking, like, run it through, so it is my own fault. And, of course, there'll always be people that don't, don't admit that, you know, their own fault or anything like that. And that's another red flag. You know, the woman who doesn't take, like, accountability for anything. For me, the, mass, the most massive red flags are, like I've said, the crim- ex- Girl who has ex was a criminal or is a criminal, especially a petty criminal, that's crap. The girl who's fucking like does drugs, you know, that's garbage. Unless I've said like, you know, every few months she's doing like MDMA with you or Coke or something. If you're on the younger side, you know, maybe you go to a festival or some event or something like that and she does it with you and it's like, you know, it's a bit fun, but she doesn't need it or she doesn't like think about it or ask you about it all the time, you know. And then the same, like girl who's a club rat table hopper just bobbing from like fucking table to the next or like dreams about getting on the table with all the flexes yeah, that's crap but then it's again if you're taking your girl to the club like maybe you take her there once a month or something like that you're like she has fun you show her off all that sort of stuff that's that's fine that's okay it's about the girl who does all that shit on her own you know then that's massively problematic because girls if they're around drugs like they're taking dicks to get it or they're like fucking someone or they're like around fucking like fiends and fucking like dope heads so the morality is going to be on the lower side and drugs affect women in many ways you know I know that extremely well it affects their brain it affects their mind and women do fucked up shit when they're dr- like on drugs or like you know coming off them or yeah it's just not really a scene you want to be involved in unless that is your like fucking business and even then, it's nothing that you would want long term. You know, I've seen it all with that shit. And then I'll say the health and fitness one. You know, it's that's not even a red flag to me because that's just dis- disqualification. The girl who doesn't come correct, you know, she's either overweight or she's like out of shape or she doesn't look after herself. She's got like, you know, just looks pretty ratty or dirty in general and has like extreme hair or some other crap. You know, that's the girl who's like broadcasting the world that she just doesn't give a shit. You know, she's like, she already knows the minimum standard to exist and she can't even meet that. You know, so that's, yeah, she's completely disqualified if she's out of shape or specifically out of shape's a big one. Or not taking care of herself. If I wouldn't be proud to walk around with her, you know, if I don't think that she makes me look good, you know, if I walk into the club with her and I would think anything other than like people are staring at her, 
I would never fucking be with her. You know, I don't need some fucking toad walking around with me that actually detracts from my own value. You know, I'm not like a fucking charity service that just hangs out with fucking bush pigs. You know, that's crap. You'll never see me like hanging out with a pig. You just won't. Like, you know, you might see me interact with one if I have to, but you'd never even see one at like an event that I host. I don't host events for whales. Everyone has to look good. Not having someone like sucking away at the ambience and the energy in the room because they're fucking like can't even meet the minimum conditions. So that's just the game, you know, like some of you need to have like pretty much a scale, you know, with some of the girls that you're pulling home from like the nightclubs and that, you should have a scale at the door, like to see if you're going to regret it in the morning or not. If she's at like a certain body weight for her height, just fucking like, you know, next her or like leave her and tell her to go downstairs and leave. Because fucking pigs, like it it's not, just doesn't do any good for the world either because it gives them an inflated sense of their own value and it forces them, like doesn't force them to change. Because there's still someone somewhere that will fuck them. And someone somewhere that will still like flatter them and shit like that. When they're presented a wreck to the world. You know, they're not even trying to fucking like meet the minimum standards. So that's crap. To me, that's bullshit. So yeah, physical fitness is of course a massive one. The girl I'm seeing now, like she's... I don't know, I put her up on my Christmas story. She's probably, I don't know, at most like 105 pounds. And she's a normal height. She's not that much shorter than me. And she's got like big tits. So that's like the minimum standard. You know, I know a lot of you guys are in the West, like Australia in the US. And you think it's funny that a chick weighs pretty much as much as you. <laughs> you know, that's complete garbage. That's fucking bullshit. You know, the US and, and, Amer- and Australia to a lesser degree, but still to a large degree. The women are just enormous. You know, it's, it's very unfeminine to have some fucking like massive belly sitting next to you, you know, and, and online she like fucking like airbrushes it and all that crap and like edits herself and shit like that to seem like she's not a pig. But yeah, it's unacceptable. Like I know girls where they haven't even had a kid or anything yet and they're already completely out of shape. You know, girls who get like, you know, the vaser or like lipo or something and they pretty much have to get it every year just because they can't even gym and like be disciplined enough to have a diet. Like, what hope does the woman like that have if you think that you're going to marry it? Like, you'd essentially be, like, wifing her up at her peak and she's just going to, tr- like, peak here and become, like, some fucking, like, massive blimp and blow her whole body out. So, you'd be buying the top. Some of you guys, if you take, like, these surgically enhanced girls, and I'm not saying all of them, I know some of them are extremely disciplined. The girl that I'm seeing now, like, she's had surgery, but she's, like, extremely disciplined. She looks after her diet, looks after her body, and, like, knows that she wants to look good for me. And for herself, you know, but some of you guys like in Australia or US or something, the surgery girls, and I'm not saying all of them, because I know some of them are fucking like incredibly attractive and I'm very much into that. But some of them just use it as like a crutch for their own laziness. So if you take a girl after she's had like shit done, you're buying the very tippy top. And unless you're the guy who's going to keep funding it or just keep getting that shit on the regular, she's going to be a fucking disaster. Like all that shit gravity is going to kick in and it's just going to fucking like sink down i know girls in the u.s like i've seen girls where they're like 21 and they've already got bad cellulite (laughs) you know imagine you're like tied to that girl and she's 30 now and she's like just looks like some fucking like pig like a toad that's crap you know so i would never put up with that you just can't you know, health is, it's a big thing. Cause if you're going to get, get her pregnant or something, have kids together with it, you want a girl who's going to bounce back and not just become a blimp. And if these girls have never really been able to be motivated, even when they're like younger and like no, no kids running around or anything like that, like zero responsibility. If they're not motivated or determined or disciplined to maintain any sort of diet where they like stay in shape when they're older, they've already got an excuse now. They're like, Oh, I just had a kid. So now I can go to like 200 pounds. <laughs> so you're fucked you know it's women it's fitness it's like a resume it's a woman who maintains her fitness beauty and things like that that's part of her resume you know you're looking into her past and being like has she is she like you know she was 21 and she was like 120 pounds and now she's like 24 or something and she's like 125 or 130 pounds you're like yeah it's it's sort of like it makes sense you know she's a normal height but 
if she's showing you photos from when she was 20 and she was like 110 pounds and now she's like 160, you're in the danger zone. Like if that's only a few years have passed or something like that, she's showing you her behavior that she's like blowing out, you know, and it, and it gets hard to reel in. You know, it's, it's easy to reel in when things like that are small. You know, you've got a girl or something and she puts on five or 10 pounds and you're like, slow the fuck down. You know, like you're turning into a fucking pig. Like, you know, you're showing me that like you're disrespecting me here and you're disrespecting yourself and I don't want to be with someone who's unhealthy. You know, I don't want to be with someone who like runs into health problems and things like that because they're fat. You know, so you've got to, you've got to be honest with your girl. You've got to be honest with the people around you. I don't know for a lot of you guys in the West, it's difficult because you're trained to be like passive. You're trained to be indirect with women too, because like you get almost afraid of them because a lot of these, like the worst things in America, they think that they're like hood girls or gangsters or something because they watch it on TV. Like they watch like Cardi B and crap like that. And they think that like they're some fucking thug. (laughs) It's really fucking dumb. You know, it's like the girls in the Oz where they've like fucked some fucking loser one to one. And now they think that, like, they're some sort of fucking, like, badass. And the fucking girl thinks she's, like, some fucking gangster. <laughs> she's a fucking loser. Even her ex was some fucking broke boy. You know, and it's, it's fucking wrong. So, yeah, you got to avoid all these girls like that. You know, that's why I say to avoid girls who've been fucking with criminals. Because a lot of them think that, like, they were fucking with some, like, El Chapo. And it was just some fucking loser driving a Holden Commodore, you know, so yeah, you want to stay away from all that shit because often they get like a, yeah, they just get like an aura of like that they're somewhat important or that they're like fucking bad or they're a thug or all that sort of crap. And they'll like encourage you to break the law. I've seen it so many guys, so many times with guys that I've known, guys that I've known who, you know, maybe they were like minor criminals or something like that. And their partner, their girl, has kind of like accelerated their offending. She's like pretty much said that she's, she likes that toxic, like she dreams about dating like some guy who's some fucking like gangster. So now this guy thinks that he has to prove that he's a bad boy and he does a bunch of fucking dumb crime and then eventually goes to jail and she's fucking like pretty much everyone. She's not loyal at all. So all that shit's like, you know, it's immoral. I see so you want to stay right away from it. No, the girls like that, it's, they're at best short time girls, but just trust me, you're fucking a girl that's been like ran through by pretty much everyone. You know, it's, it's not really a prize that you want to have. It's pretty embarrassing. <clears throat> a lot of the girls are very smashed out in those circles, but fuck it. Let's get into the AMA. I think we vented on women there and red flags many a time. Actually... Let's fucking go green flags. Let's keep it some ends of something positive. Like we've gone red flags is pretty extreme. You know, extreme red flags there. Let's go green flags. Flags where you look at and you're like, actually, this woman might have something about her. And I've said it before with the pleasant, but it's a very big one. If you're around her and she's got like an aura of innocence to her or some sort of like, see the women that are damaged or traumatized or experience, they'll show you their experience and they think that that impresses you. Like, they'll show how comfortable they are around men. They'll show how, like, you know, be overly sexual. And they'll be, like, fucking twerking and doing all this other crap. And that's not what men like. You know, that's what the fuck boy likes. Or that's what a guy likes if he wants to fuck for a short time. You know, maybe he wants to, like, just get a fuck that night. And he's, like, kind of either desperate or he's kind of, like, yeah, I'm just going to, like, slum it tonight. But then, like, you know, I might smash this chick in the toilets or something and then, like, fuck her off. You know, but... That's not the thing that the guy looks at and he's like, I want anything long term with that chick. You know, it's no one that he would take serious. It's no one that he want to introduce to anyone important. You know, it's imagine you're at a business dinner or something and you like walk in with some toe rag that's been fucking like drilled by half the city. You know, it's pretty fucking embarrassing, that shit. You know, it's not something that really you want to be involved in because again, it's like lowering your value. Because if you fucked her, it's different. But if you're now walking around with her as though she's some, like, prize, you're pretty much, like, putting your reputation on the line with her and introducing her to people. That's pretty fucking dumb. That's damaging. And a girl like that could have very low morals and start, like, messaging guys around you and things like that and make you look fucking terrible. You know, so... Green flags are going to be the girl who's got that aura of innocence about her. 
She might have fucked a lot of guys. You don't know. The smart girls fuck guys like away. They fuck guys like out of their city. They fuck guys like they go overseas and fuck guys. They go on trips and like keep it away so their name stays mostly clean in the air. You know, the guy that, the girl that people want to take like serious is the girl who has the aura of innocence. She has like, you know, almost like a naivety about her, but it can be like a pretend one. You know, the really smart girls put that like, you know, it lures guys in that sort of like aura of like this is the first time I've been in this club or this is like the first time that I've ever like you know sat in a nice car or like the first time that I've traveled here or that sort of stuff even if it's not you know it's that's what guys like to hear you know because a guy will look at a girl who's flexing online and like you know she might be in a private jet photos on the jet she's photos in a Lamborghini she's on the shisha in Dubai she's got like you know she's on a yacht in Dubai and the smart guy the guy that's like knows the game is just going to be like that was one dick two dicks three dicks four dicks but now it's five dicks because she's at like Tomorrowland or something like that so because she can't afford that on her own you know so the smart guy knows that it's at least one dick per pick you know so it's it's not shit that you really fucking want you know versus the girl who's doesn't have any of that crap online just got that like aura of mystery about her you don't know anyone that's fucked her You know, if you have, like, a circle of friends and no one's going to be like, yeah, I fucked that girl or, like, you know, have, like, crazy stories about her, like, getting fucked or, like, being a mess in the club or something like that. You know, no one's going to have any of that bullshit to talk about her. Her reputation is quite clean. Another good one is if you sit down and talk to the girl and she, like, you know, or, or talk to her online and she starts talking about her dad, like, in a positive light or she's talking about, like, respecting her brother or something like that. Another green flag is going to be, yeah, so she respects the men in her life, you know, the men that matter, like family. Another one's going to be, and it's more common here, they'll start talking about family, like they want to have a family and family is the most important thing to them. And they like unity and they talk about like, you know, that they have good relationship with their parents. And even if they don't, they don't really have like the damage. They're not like doing the Western thing where they just jump in and start talking about how bad their parents are. You know, they keep like a lot of, it's very normal around here, like Ukrainian women or things like that. They're actually in like real trauma. Like life's very hard. You know, they know people that have died in the war. Like they might have family members that have died in the war and they don't talk about it. They don't come over here and just start like spewing their guts out. That's like a Western concept because they know that like it, it matters to them, you know, who they share their information with or like, you know, who they show themselves to. You know, that matters because they keep... And it keeps, like, that aura again of, like... I don't know, it keeps it special when they do open their heart up or, like, open up about experiences that they've had, even if they're negative ones like that. You know, like, their dad might have been blown up or their brother might have gone off to the war and he's missing or shit's happened, like, their family business has had to close down and all this other stuff's happened. But they don't just get into, like, the dirt, like, in, in Oz or something like that. Like, a chick will just spew her guts out about all this trauma on a guy who she's known for like two weeks and then essentially like shit the place up because then it's starting from like she's just spewed all this crap into the relationship and it's still so early so it's still like you're still finding each other out they they're much more private in that regard like you know they can generally take and they're also the same sort of women ukrainian women i found in general if they see shit they don't really like run around and tell people You know, if you ever do something, like, and they witness it, they don't just spew it around the fucking world. Like, a lot of the girls in the West would just, they don't really have that, like, I think it's integrity. You know, they they run around and, like, these sort of women in the West, they don't really keep secrets. You know, these girls, like Ukrainian girls or Eastern European girls, they're used to seeing shit that's, like, like that. You know, they're a bit more exposed to how the world really is because they're around, like, violence, but also... It's a hard life there, you know, the jobs in that are, are difficult to get and the pay sucks. So they have known like more people like that, you know, that have to do difficult things to, to survive. So they're a bit more exposed to like the realities of the world. They're less like sitting on a, a couch and fucking like judging people. They're more like, you know, if we don't do X or Y, like the family's not going to eat tonight, you know, so they're a bit more understanding. But. Yeah, another thing that I've noticed too, it's they're of course like Ukrainian girls or you Polish or Russian girls, whatever, they're much more in shape. You know, they know that that sort of stuff matters. And again, that's a green flag. If you're meeting a woman and 
she's just in, in shape. That doesn't mean that she's built like fucking some fitness model, but she at least like looks, you look like you're like, yeah, she can maintain, like she's obviously maintaining a diet. Like some sort of like, she's got the discipline. She's trying to present like to the world her best self. You know, she's not just turning up essentially like some fucking broken, like if she was a car, she's not turning up with like, you know, the bumper missing and like the fucking like bonnet ripped off or like one door hanging off by the hinges. You know, she's a lot of women in the, in the West specifically, if they were like a car, they wouldn't be able to pass a roadworthy. And I wish that they had roadworthies for fucking like relationships. Cause a lot of the women there are like a fucking wreck. You know, even if they might look okay on the outside, like inside, they're completely fucked. They've got like a hardness towards men and that's only come because it's been forced from trauma. You know, it's I've said it to men too. The hardness that they have, it's not like, you know, it's only there cause it's forced. Like if, if you're learning from a dating coach or some sort of guru or some bullshit like that, I find most of them are, are lawyers, but they're, a lot of them talk badly about women and things like that because it's been forced. It's like a forced hardness to them. You know, they're, they're, they've been forced by a lot of rejection and bad experiences. And the hardness women can get in the coldness, that's been forced as well by bad experiences. And now they're like, yeah, it's, it's difficult to get through to them. I find Ukrainian women or like Eastern Euro women too. They just know that beauty is important. You know, it's, it's very competitive in Ukraine. If you ever go there or like see the Ukrainian women in general, they are very attractive. You know, they're, they're always, or well, not always, I'm not going to say always, but very much in shape. You know, they, they know the power of like their beauty, but also their femininity. You know, it's, it's not uncommon that they'll be wearing dresses, even if it's like two degrees outside or three degrees outside, they'll wear dresses to like the dinners or like the clubs or events or things like that or restaurants. It's not like, you know, in the West where girls run around in yoga pants everywhere so that they put zero effort in, you know, so they can just be lazy and like squash all their fat in and then think that they got a big ass, but really like their stomach's just really like scrunched in. And if they take it, take it off, they look like fucking SpongeBob. <laughs> it's a fucking disaster over there. It's nothing like that here. You know, being thin is important. Or being at least like thin with curves or like, you know, not having a belly. That's fucking important. You know, so those women are disqualified. But again, Green Flags is going to be talking about wanting a family. You know, have a plan, have a route to have kids. They'll often talk about their route to have kids, you know, that they want to have a family. They'll talk about like, you know, they'll talk about their own goals, like their own goals in life. Often they understand more that they want to play like a supportive role in their man's business or like what their man's doing, you know, and it. The thing that they tell you in the West is that if you're in a supporting role, like if you're leading and the other person's supporting, the other person isn't important. You know, that's bullshit. A lot of you are probably the same though, like the idea of supporting like a partner, even a business partner, or even supporting another man, like to win. That doesn't like, you know, really do it for you. But you have to understand like where to take pride in. Pride is not always in the guy who makes the touchdown. Like maybe I've said it before, like you're the guy blocking and you're the guy taking the hits, like you're getting fucking like knocked around and getting hurt. And then you see the guy run over the try line, like the touchdown, and everyone jumps on him and like, you know, he's the, he's the man. And you're like fucking laying in the mud on the ground because he got fucking crushed just so he could make the try or the touchdown. But then you need to understand that it wasn't possible without you. You know, it's, you have to learn how to like gracefully be a supporting role sometimes. It doesn't, you can't always be the man. You know, the only time you can be the man is in your own head. And for a lot of you, that's an issue because you only really like get stuck in your own head. Like a lot of you, if you're around men that are other higher levels, it intimidates you or makes you uncomfortable because it shines a light that the bullshit, like the, I'm the man, it's not the case, you know, and, and I've been like that, you know, I've, when I was selling dope, I thought that I was the man, you know, I'd have a massive ego. I thought that there was just no one really like not many people better than me. You know, I had friends that I would consider like equals, but uh, beyond that, outside of our circle, I considered most people fucking like not on our like tier, you know, not on our level. And that was like a lack of self-awareness because obviously there were people like many tiers above me. So a lot of that shit all had to die, you know, and now I hang, regularly hang around guys that are above me and I don't fucking like pretend that they're not. 
you know, I learned to give respect and like acknowledge and, and admit that there are guys that are above me. And that's the guys that generally I get the most out of like fucking being around. I get the most out of being around guys that are above me or, or like beside me in like levels. But I also get, get above guys that might be like below me, you know, they're still building their own value up. Because if they're asking for help or whatever, it helps me, like helping helps me understand like my own thought process to a point. You know, I already have it all, all down exactly like who I am and things like that. But sometimes people ask me a question that like draws me back to a moment or something like that. And then I'll talk about it and then like the clip or something will finish, like I'll finish recording and I'll be like, actually, yeah, I hadn't really thought about that for a while. And that's a powerful lesson that relates to something that I'm going through now. You know, it's, it's very much like if someone tells you their story, like their life story, and it's like being a, a long life, it relates kind of like the stories in the Bible, you know, where you can listen to a story like a story or two, and it, it relates to, to many things that you might be going through today. You know, that's what the Bible means to me. It means like, you know, it's just a, a amount of shared wisdom from a, a fuckload of people. You know, it's whether you believe it or not, like you can't read it and be like, there's no wisdom here. You know, it's... You would have to be pretty fucking like blind or tone deaf to not understand that the stories can relate to many other parts that things that you're probably going through today or things that are happening in like the world around us. You know, things generally work in circles. And a guy who's a smart guy takes like all he can, gets like the sponge and fucking squeezes every drop out. But yeah, let's get into answering some questions. So the green flags are, I've said, in shape, looks after her body. Doesn't mean that she's like fucking some fitness model or has like fucking E cup tits and like a narrow waist. That that's might be your preference that you like like doll type girls. That's generally what I like. But that doesn't mean that like fucking you know she needs to at least like look after her body and herself. And that's part of like valuing and respecting you that she wants to look good for you. You know, another green flag for me will be girls that ask my opinion on things. Like, you know, if she thinks that, like, she should wear this dress or, like, this outfit or asks how she looks, I'm always giving feedback. And I know for some of you, you like, the concept of complimenting a girl, it's foreign. Because you think, like, that it's going to, like, you need to lower her value a lot in your own mind. You have to chip away at her value because then she's not going to fucking leave or, like, you can essentially run her over. But that's giving her bad feedback because she doesn't know like how to make you happy then compliments are a way to like you know you steer her in a certain direction you do that through compliments you do that through compliments but also yeah you can do it through like discipline and things like that but you can't always be like one side you know you can't always be like fucking critical or you can't always be like you know laying the hammer down by like telling her shit that she's doing wrong you have to do it because then when you're one way the other way has more meaning like if you compliment a girl like 60% of the time and 40% of the time you're correcting it, that actually like has value then because she's like, oh, I like to feel good. And when he's correcting me, I don't feel good. So it actually has like fucking a value. Whereas if you're always critical to it, like a 90 or 100% of the time, it loses its effect because she's like, oh, well, he's just always like that. So it's like you've got a dog and you're just kicking it all the time. You know, it's eventually going to become a shit dog. You can tell dogs like that have had bad owners or whatever and, and then like they're out in the wild and they're like at the shelter or whatever and a lot of them just get put down because like they keep getting returned because they've learned a bunch of bad habits. <laughs> You'll understand that's a lot of the time what happens to these damaged women. They had the wrong guy and the guy just fucked them up. But it only fucked them up because he didn't know what he was doing. Women you have to fucking like, you know, give as well. If she, if you see like long term potential in her, or like she, she has like you know attributes and that that you can like you like, you have to be able to compliment it to steer in the direction you want. You know you have to be able to because it gives yeah like I've said before it gives you or like you know if you have to discipline her by like words or whatever, tell her shit you don't like or like you know shit that she's doing wrong that pisses you off. It has more of a meaning because she wants to get back to that situation where she's like in your good books because it actually has value. Instead of just like he's always fucking pissed off at me, you know, and, and that's loses its luster. It's like the beaten woman who like is battered all the time. Like the concept of getting battered again doesn't really like worry her, doesn't give a shit. But she's like fucked up now. And it's gonna come out in other ways. So you can't do all that shit. 
you gotta fucking like be fair you know you can't be one way all the time do you have alright let's go do you have any advice for people who just graduated high school and are lost do I have advice for people who just graduated high school and are lost my advice is get to fucking work like you know it's time to produce it's not time the fucking like consumption is done you know, you've been at high school, you've been essentially consuming a bunch of fucking books and crap. I don't know what you, like, studied. Like, maybe you hopefully studied, like, one specific subject that, that gives you some, like, relatable skills into the business that you want to do. But now, if you don't want to go to uni, and I would only recommend uni if you're, like, very intelligent and want to go into STEM, then it's time to fucking produce. It's time to get to work. It's time to start, like, building your resume. I don't know what you want to do. Like, you know, I don't know what you're like qualified to do. I don't know what your dad does, but I would be using the family connections to get a job that's not complete garbage. And it's in a field that you have like, you know, aspire to be in that actually makes money. And I would be learning. You know, when I was that age, I was working at fucking like McDonald's. I didn't have jack shit. You know, I'd fuck all. I hadn't even fucked a girl that age. Don't even think I'd like really kissed a girl that age. So I was way fucking behind. I was playing Counter-Strike a lot of the time as well. So, yeah, you need to just hit the ground running now. Like, you need to just get in there. You don't need to worry about getting, like, the perfect job or the perfect gig or some crap like that. You just need to, like, build experience now. You're like the pawn on the board who's just, like, shown up, and now it's time to make, like, advances to the fucking end of the board. You know, your value is going to be incredibly low just out of high school. That's, but that's normal. You know, it's the shit that you're going through now is just got to remember that it's nothing that like millions of people in the world aren't going through at your exact time. The same thoughts that you have, the other guys are having as well. But yeah, you just got to get to work. You know, it's, it's time to fucking like build experience. And it's not time to be some perfectionist that thinks that he needs to fucking wait for the perfect gig or the perfect job or all this like, crap that just puts off like development working even if it's a job you hate that's going to teach you a lot more about who you are and what you want because you build the bad experience now like you're building experience but it'll be unenjoyable but that's what builds like your resolve and your toughness that's what builds like your grit and that's what builds like you know the boat around you where you're like i don't want to go back to that shitty job you know, so I have to fucking like work you know and that's what builds the exposure to people and ideas and like you know business you see things and you're like, actually, I'm really getting like picking that up or I've got an interest in that or like, you know, I want to move into that field or I can learn from this specific guy. That only happens when you start working. What's what's something around getting rich that you didn't pay enough attention to that I had to learn the hard way? That's a good question. Something about getting rich that I didn't pay attention to is probably tax minimization. And I mean it the legal way. I don't mean tax evasion. I mean, like, legally, like, how you can fucking, like, pay less taxes. You know, how you can optimize your tax strategies. I didn't really do that. And, and, but it was different for me. I was stuck in Australia. You know, I was stuck fucking on parole there. I paid, like, 1.1 million over three years of taxes (laughs) that I probably shouldn't have fucking, like, had to pay so much. But that's the game. You know, once you're making big boy money, like, maybe you're making, like, at least 200k a year. I would be starting to look into tax like minimization maybe 150 but but not less than that some guys will get so obsessed with getting trusts and all this crap and spending like tens of thousands of dollars and then their net worth's like 50k or 100k that's pointless you know i wouldn't be running around like dealing with attorneys or any of that crap unless you're fucking like making a lot of money or have that sort of money you know a lot of that shit is garbage like it's just an expense that you're not really going to need until like you're on massive money you know but yeah, tax optimization is one. I'd be looking at like fucking another one's probably like, you know, like the digital nomad style where they have like the, I don't know, like arbitrage of a country, you know, a certain countries where you can like weigh the benefits of staying in Australia versus being in like, I don't know, UAE or something like that, where the tax is much less and, and the lifestyle is probably better, you know, but yeah, it's... Once you're making big enough money, you can think about all that crap. Another thing around getting rich that a lot of people don't pay attention to, I of course did pay attention to it, is investing. 
you know, I always recommend investing like at least 10% of your net profit every fucking month, even in this market, because it'll still multiply, you know, multiply even if it takes like five years time. It's still multiply. And I'd be looking at like the Dow or crypto or certain like blue chip cryptos like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I wouldn't be looking at really anything else. But yeah, with a longer time frame, like five years, I imagine everything's going to at least double. So versus just like stacking cash. A lot of guys will get gun shy and just stack a bunch of cash. And that's like crap because you fucking like learn fear around like having money. You know, they, they think that they just need to hold on to as much cash as they can. But cash is essentially like deteriorating. You know, it's it's depreciating. I know it's had a good year this year. They'll probably have a good year next, like this year coming and the year before that. The USD specifically has been quite strong, like the DXY. But I imagine all that shit's like, you know, coming to an end. The DXY seems to have topped and, and a bunch of other crap. I think inflation's pretty much topped, like whether it has another resurgence and gets like near, near the peak. I don't think it's going to really cross that peak. So I think that's pretty much done, which means that the markets are probably done for this year, but then they'll be starting to pick up again. Maybe pick up around like election time. So what's that, 2024? What's something most guys think is important that they can just skip entirely? It's a good question, actually. What do most guys fucking need to skip? Trying to please their parents. That's one thing that guys should fucking skip. They try to please their parents specifically when they're young. You know, I know guys where they're like 20 years old and they just think like I need to fucking like make mummy and daddy proud and fucking like, you know, my, no, I'm 20 years old and I just want to start paying for my mom or like my dad's rent and I want to do all this crap. That's garbage, you know, because you're essentially like fucking like valueless. You know, you're, you're just sacrificing your own future. It's like you're like a seed. You're all, you're like on like $300 a week and you think that if you cut your wage in half and give $150 to your mom instead of spending that $150 on developing yourself over like years, like that's, you fucked yourself up for years and essentially capped your own future. Whereas the guy who just like excels until he's 30 can now help his mum and dad out forever. You know, it's, it's like the fucking like analogy of the fruit tree or like the golden goose versus the guy who just eats the goose. Like at the bat, you, he doesn't like wait for the eggs. He he's just takes like that shitty pain, gives it straight to his mum. And, but then he can't in reinvest in himself because he's kind of broke and he also fucks up his own future because he's like limited limits his own like development because he's essentially like fucking stuck there you know he's stuck going to be stuck on lower money and he's going to be stuck in that like sort of mindset where his life revolves around like pleasing his parents to a degree and there's the guy who can do it passively now like you know it's my mum, like I've helped her out, like, you know, she's helped me out a lot in my life and she's been very fucking supportive when I was going to court and things like that. But I've helped her out, like she lives in a house, she's lived in a house of mine for probably like the last eight years, like pay to pay no rent and things like that. But that's like part of it, you know, that's why you do, do this shit that we do. That's why you work hard. So you can fucking like look after the people that looked after you. So... That's the way it goes, you know, but that's only possible because I fucking like didn't sit there and think like I have to look after mummy every minute or mum and dad. I built my own skills up and like my own income and I only started doing it once I could really afford it. I didn't fucking like jump the gun. I invested in myself until then, you know, like I reinvested into my own business until it was monumental and then to help them out was like still quite easy you now. So that's just the way it goes. Thoughts on people who follow honorable careers, such as military, firefighters, despite the low pay. I have a lot of respect for people that do that. I'm not one of those fucking retards that jumps on here and says that guys in the military are dumb. Because they're not. Like, it's... There's a difference between guys who are fucking, like, you know, dumb or, or whatever, and guys who, like, have the honor and the discipline to join the army. And some of them, like, follow the footsteps of their, like, dad or uncle or grandfather or something like that. My dad was in the army and, and I joined the army. I didn't have like a massive career in there. I had a fucking bad accident in the helicopter thing. But that doesn't mean that like, you know, it's, I've spent a lot of time around veterans. Spent 14 months in an army hospital. Spent a lot of time around veterans who were fucking badly injured in the war. You know, I was 14 months in a hospital with them, 24 hours a day. 
So I know veterans extremely well, like extremely fucking well. I've met probably over a thousand of them with all sorts of injuries since the fucking wars. But yeah, I find it's very honorable. It's an honorable life. You know, it's, it's just a different life. It's not like not everyone is made to be like some fucking megalomaniac. You know, it's not everyone's the same. You know, not everyone's like gets pleasure out of just being as rich as possible. I know it's hard to imagine, but there are guys who like they, they get a lot of pride out of duty, you know, like service, like service to their country. And I know a lot of the fucking soy boys, they try to tell people that like the army or like the military or like being a policeman or a fighter fighter is for fucking like retards. And that's only because they themselves wouldn't be able to do it or like they're fearful or they like don't have the discipline to make it even through basic training. So they want to like virtue signal and be like, I wouldn't do that because I'm too smart. But really they don't have the discipline. Like they don't have the fucking stones to do it. Like it is, it's a difficult job. Like it's fucking, it doesn't really matter what like branch of the military you are in. It's still not that fucking easy. Like you're still often doing shit that you don't want to do. So it builds up like your like discipline and you're like, you know, it's not like <clears throat> guys will say, oh, why would you follow orders? You know, you're a fucking idiot. Like, shouldn't you be, want to be the boss or all that stuff? It's not everyone's like, not everyone can be a general and not everyone can be like a fucking the boss or the man. Not everyone has it in them, but that doesn't mean that like, you know, if you're a number two or you're a number three or you're a number 10, you know, it doesn't mean that like, you're like worthless. You know, the military is just one way that you'll find very quickly where you stand, like where you fit into the world and you'll understand like that there are fucking like a structure. You could be a super soldier, but that doesn't mean that you're just going to go up to sergeant You know, you still have to go through the fucking like process. You'll have to pay your dues. You still might be bossed around by a sergeant who like barely has his shit together. And you're exceptional. That's just the way it goes. You know, a lot of it is like time in matters. Like if someone's been in for a longer period of time, it generally means that they're like above you in, in how things are viewed. That's the way it is. But the army and the military are like firefighters or something like that. It's, they're very neat. You know, and, and I imagine like a firefighter gets a lot of satisfaction out of generally saving people. You know, it's not everyone like if you got the genetics or like the discipline or the mindset or something to like run into burning buildings and like you're exceptionally fit you can carry like tanks and all that shit like in fucking like dangerous climates and it's hot and everything's hard and shit like that if you can do that job like a metro firefighter or something like that it's a dangerous job so if you got the balls and things to do it in the resolve i don't think that that's like means that they're any less you know i don't think that they're paid enough i don't think that they're respected enough I think that people only fucking like see them when they need to. You know, I think people like that, it's it's like when the country hasn't had a war for a while or something like that, they think that that means that now's the time to fucking sell all their weapons and like throw them all in the trash. They don't need it or like, you know, they'll see a firefighter and they won't really notice him until like the building's burning. And then they're like, where's that guy gone? But they forget that they're people as well. You know, so I do think that it's a very honourable job. I don't think that they're paid enough. Military's the same. I don't think that they're paid enough. I think it's very honourable. I think that the they have a, a message against them because they intimidate the soy boy. You know, it's like a, another one of those like toxic masculinity things because the soy boy knows he doesn't have the discipline. He doesn't have the stones to run into the burning building. He can't even carry like the fucking oxygen tank. Even just like strap it on his body and like walk five flights of stairs he would probably pass out and have a heart attack so people are always trained to despise what they can't have or like what they can't be and when they see jobs like that that are quite masculine jobs they're trained to like hate them and think that like you know oh, i'm too smart for that i would never do that it's crap but some people just get like you know their pleasure or like their fucking pride or or their like good feelings from other things you know someone might be fucking worth like a hundred million and he owns fucking a thousand houses or something and then he stands next to a firefighter and he goes oh yeah man like you you just need to be rich like me i'm in the fucking ferrari at the front but then like you like quantify who's done more with their life and then the guy the firefighter might have saved like five people or like a family of five or something like that and <laughs> I would say substantially, he probably has more substance. You know, he's probably more needed in the work because that's a job that's not for everyone. 
I think that firefighters and, and those jobs in general, like police or army, I think that they're going to be a lot harder to get people in, in the future, because they don't really get a lot of respect. And people that do want to do those jobs, they have a big sense of duty. Like the respect is a massive thing to them. So when they get disrespected by their own people, like, you know, they're walking around and they're like, people don't really even give them shit, like give them, sh like acknowledge them or give them respect or things like that. Like a guy's walking around in the army or like a guy who's a firefighter or something like that. Like they don't get enough respect, you know, and that's their current, like that's their commodity, like their currency because they get paid fuck all. So if they're not getting what they like originally signed up for, a lot of them won't join. And then a lot of the police and that in the US, like they get very fucking like treated like crap and dragged through the media now. Like if they pull a gun out and shoot someone, they have to be like fearful that it can blow back up in their own face and their own fucking like sergeant known like, you know, officers like the boss won't even protect them. He'll just fucking like throw them out to the wolves of the press to drag them and then like fuck their life up. They're not protected by their own like industry. So... I think that uh, it will be a lot less attractive for people to join that field in the future. But that's, I think, by design, because a lot of that stuff, firefighting maybe not so much, but a lot of, like, the, the policing in the future is be, like, robotics and, like, automation to a degree. Courts will be automated, where it's just, like, logic. Like, they lay everything down into a computer and essentially spits out the, the information. You know, it's, it's not going to be, like up to a specific judge to execute people it'll be like a computer program or like you know it's like a police will just be like robotic where it'll be like you know it's it's not really it's just set parameters that it operates within so they won't have to worry so much about like paying duties or like you know paying people out if they get shot there won't be a, like argument because it's not like an emotional thing it's just acting within the like software that it has and that will be the fucking like get out of jail free card but that's still well into the future but people won't want to join those fields either into the future because they're not respected enough and they're not fucking like looked after like the army vets and that when they get out of the war in australia they looked after quite well i was in the keith Payne veterans unit there stayed there for 14 months so i would say that the veterans there are fairly well looked after but i have veteran friends in the states and they're not as well looked after and then in other countries where they're poorer, they're not really looked after at all, you know, so that's just how it goes. How did you mentally, physically prepare when going to jail? I was already like physically fit. The funniest thing was I went to court and I was meant to get my bail extended. They're like, yeah, you know, you'll get your bail extended. Fucking everything's going to be fine this time. I'd been to court probably like, 20 or 30 times for this because originally it had started at trafficking and then as the courts had gone through like the courts had gone through the court I was going to contest it the whole way through I got to about a month before my trafficking fucking like trial which was in Supreme Court and they're like oh well you have to take like if you'll take these like four charges and not contest any of them we'll fucking drop the trafficking and downgrade it and fuck it off and the trafficking was my biggest charge that was like, you know, at least like 10 or 20 years trafficking under VLAD, which is an SVO. So it means you have to do 80% of your time. And then, yeah, they said, oh, we'll drop that. It won't be under VLAD, but you have to like plead to drug supplies, some DV, fucking, no, the DV I'd already pled to actually. So it was drug supplies, arson, insurance fraud, or like an attempt at insurance fraud. So it was a bunch of fucking crap. And then, yeah, I fuck, oh, and a home invade as well. So I went to a guy's house and like broke in and bashed the shit at him. So I had to plead to all of that. And I did, you know, because I knew that the trafficking was the biggest charge. I knew that under this, I would get less time. I didn't have to fucking like, you know, talk about anyone. I just had to, yeah, go in and, and get the reduced charge. But it's only because I think that to tr take it to trial, it would have relied a lot on my ex. Like she would have had to fucking come in consistently. And I don't think she would have gone very well, like, getting cross-examined. Because a lot of the case, like, relied on her statement. Her statements were that I was selling drugs to a few people. And then one of them who had been caught with drugs himself, that they're saying that I sold him. And then he was saying that he got it off me. So their, their case was, like, still 
kind of circumstantial. Like they never really found me with shit. So their case itself wasn't that strong. But the funniest thing is with Australia, they make it so like, you know, you take it to court, yeah, you'll take it to trial for trafficking. But if you lose, like if the court looks at you and they're like, I don't like this guy. Like, you know, the jury say, fuck this guy, I don't like him. Or like the, the judge, you have a judge only. And the judge just doesn't like it. Or the judge has been like worded up before to fuck you over. And you take it to trial now and you lose, you get the max. Like you're fucked. You know, you're fucked because you essentially have admitted no guilt. You've, the court will see it as you've lied the whole way through and you've accepted like no responsibility for what you've done. So now the 20 years is on the table versus the guy who just like takes the plea like I did, like a lesser charge. And then not took it to court, but I could have won. Like maybe there's a chance that I would have won, but I had to take the lesser charge because I can't take that risk, which means that I still got six years. So that's life. You know, so they essentially put you in a bad situation. You'll see when they really want to fuck someone, they charge them with a few big charges because they're willing to sacrifice one or two to get them for a third. That's the game. Like that's the game on the higher end. It's not about getting someone for one charge. It's about getting them for like two or three big ones and then they'll drop two but still get you with one. That's how you know they really want to fuck someone. They'll get them for a couple of big charges. And with me, it's more about like character, character assassination as well, because it paints you in a bad light. So it still sticks with you for a long time. But how I mentally prepared for jail and physically, I was actually on a cycle. So I was going fucking, I was going to like getting locked up, whatever, going to jail. But I was like, I met a bail hearing like two months before I was meant to go to jail. So I was on cycle. I was on like 700 milligrams, 750 of test and test it. And then I had like another month or like three weeks or something of cycle. And I was going to run like three or four weeks of PCT. So I had about two, two months left before I was meant to go to jail. So I would have been fine. But then we get to court and the, my barrister's like, yeah, they probably extend your bail. You know, it's all, it's all been fine. And then the judge is just like, fuck this guy. Like, let's just, he's going to go to jail, clearly. So let's just start his jail now. So I went to jail when I was on 750 milligrams of test. And it was fucking crap. I had to, like, come off on nothing. Like, no PCT. I lost, like, I think I went to prison. I was, like, 95 kilos or so. I lost, like, fucking 15 kilos or more. Maybe 20 before I got out. Because I'd fucked up my, like, you know... Axis, like my, it took me ages to get back into like equilibrium, like homeostasis, because I was on cycle when I got locked up. And then I've gone from like, you know, on cycle, eating well, lifting heavy, to suddenly being in jail on cycle, like coming off and fucking like there's no weights at all. And I've got a shit diet. I'm eating like probably like 20 grams of protein a day. So I lost nearly 20 kilos. It took me ages to recover. Like my homeostasis was completely rocked. I think it must have taken me like six months till I was like recovered from what I felt. Felt like complete shit. It took fucking, yeah, it took fucking ages to recover. And I remember too, I had, so I got, had gotten sent to jail and I was taking, like before I went to jail, I was taking Seroquel. So I had like, um, cause I was bailed to an army hospital uh, and then I had to take like the medicine shit that they gave me like the medicine for PTSD. So I was still taking Seroquel. And when I went to went to jail for like the first week or two, probably two week, at least a week, but sick for like weeks, I was vomiting because I was having really bad withdrawals from the pills because I couldn't, I couldn't have them in jail. So I always remember like fucking vomiting all night, like just so sick. I was just in massive withdrawals from like the, the legal fucking pills that they had me on. So that was fucking difficult and then I was on like withdrawals from gear like take withdrawals from test or well, essentially like you know not on PCT while my body was trying to like get back to homeostasis so it was a fucking absolute mess but mentally and physically I was already prepared I already knew what I was walking into I had a lot of people that I knew that were in jail or had been to jail had been in that lifestyle for years I think that if you were to mentally and physically prepare you would just start boxing boxing and getting bigger like gaining weight being just more like you know menacing but still understanding that you can be menacing but you still have to be able to talk to people I'd be working on my social skills working on my like fucking ability to give respect ability to like be humble 
I wouldn't be big noting and running around like annoying people. Jail's not somewhere you want to make a bunch of enemies and annoy a bunch of people. Because what happens is you piss people off and then they go in their cell and they brew on it. Like everyone goes to their cell at the end of the night. And if they have a cellmate, they talk about it. So they'll be like, you know, so-and-so really fucking pissed me off. And then it festers. And then when they get out of the cell, they're like, I'm going to smash this gun. So yeah, it, it builds up. You don't want to build like fucking heaps of enemies or bad experiences or like bad interactions because they multiply. There's not much to talk about in jail besides other people. And those people usually have nothing going on with their life. So they do talk about other people a lot. Like I know with me, a lot of the fucking like that circle of people will just be talking about me nonstop now. Because that's, it's just the way that they are. You know, they'll talk about other people two people like they themselves have nothing going on and they're not interesting so they'll like talk about people it's just part of what they do it's like entertainment <laughs> and they'll talk about how shit that person is or something while they themselves being massive losers so yeah mentally physically I would just be getting bigger stronger toughening up giving respect showing how you can be respectable not coming in wanting dope all that sort of shit is important What's the most impactful lesson you teach your 20 year old self to embrace and enjoy pain and enjoy like the, the journey, the ride, you know, the fucking hippie dorks talk about embracing the journey and then they just like do fucking nothing that's difficult. I would embrace things that are difficult. That doesn't mean things that are against the law. That doesn't mean things that like damage your reputation or like make people hate you. But I'll, I, that's like a fucking cheat code. You don't want to build up a bunch of bad interactions and shit with people. Because there's no advantage to being disliked. There's just not. Like, that's what the trolls and, like, the fucking retards on TikTok that jump on and say a bunch of negative shit. There's no advantage to being liked. Like, if I remember a person's name and I'm talking to someone I know who, like, runs a company, and I have done this before, I had a guy fucking that I fucking dis disliked in a certain country. I'm not going to say where because the person will figure it out. And I knew the guy, like, I knew someone that was high up in the business that they worked in. And then I, I talked to this guy and I contacted the guy's boss. This guy was a fucking like cocksucker. And I just said to him like, oh, I'll pay you 10K. I want you to fire this guy. And he's like, oh yeah, but I like, this guy's worked for me for like a few years. And I was like, I'll just give you the cash. And he fucking like terminated the dude from his fucking wage cuck job. And that's like, essentially it's like money that really is nothing to me, but it can affect the guy's life. You know, I could have easily gotten like revenge on the guy, but that's just like easy for me to do that sort of shit but that was a guy who was just talking like endless shit and just being a fucking idiot like making threats against like my family and stuff so while in another country you know that's like cowardly it's dumb with me I don't care if people jump on and talk shit about me but if you like start threatening me or threatening my family and like you know making it seem like you're gonna do something in the real world well I can retaliate you know it's, it's not fucking hard for me I know people in every like major city like people that matter people that can fucking like make a difference in your life so yeah retaliate but it's just a lesson you know like it's it's no advantage to being disliked like being hated it, it's pretty dumb just so that you can get like a, a snide comment in you know it's that's pointless like that's dumb because that shit doesn't really matter it's not about who has like the quickest one liner or like some funny crap that they say and then they turn the laptop off or shut it and they're a fucking loser you know, that's, that's dumb. What is the first thing you do after waking up to kick your day off? I usually wake up and I'll do like, I don't know, maybe like two or three max sets of push-ups. I find that it like wakes me up. Maybe I'll do like, I don't know, 200 push-ups or something in three sets. And then over like five minutes or something. And then I'll like feel awake and then I go get a coffee. And then I start to assess what needs doing during the day, the most important things. You know, most of my time is on my own. Like, you know, it's, it's just on my own steam. So a lot of the shit, like if I have to get shit done, it matters, like I have to be the guy that like motivates myself. I have to be disciplined. You know, I can't just fuck around during the day. I still have to get shit done. So yeah, it's, that's the biggest start of it. I start out with some fitness, like start out, feel like a bit pumped up. So I feel good, like awake and alive. 
I'll have coffee and then I usually don't eat breakfast. I won't eat till like at least one or two in the afternoon. I'll get up at about nine. So yeah, I like to have at least like five hours, sometimes six, sometimes eight without eating. And then I treat like the food kind of as like a reward. I think that's important. <laughs> Advice with getting over fear of talking on camera. I keep putting on a fake personality. This is practice. You know, you're trying to think too much of what the other person wants and not like being yourself. You know, I, I think that that's kind of like a nice guy approach maybe, like a nice guy behavior. You're thinking of like your audience instead of thinking of like just being congruent to yourself and just talking. You know, you can't, it's going to be difficult for you to be like congruent to who you are, like, you know, be yourself and be different or, or just like show your own message. If you're just trying to be like everyone else, like why, why would people watch you if they can just like you're acting like someone else, they can just watch that other person who's more popular than you. You know, you only have like your own story and your own like mannerisms and personality to, to project. That's going to be the one that people gel with. You know, it's because even if you are like, you know, any type of person, maybe you're a nerd, maybe you're like a fitness guy or you could be anyone. There's always going to be people that gel with you if you are yourself. You know, you got to put your like, it's like anything, like you put your flag up uh, up in the air and then you like broadcast who you are and say like, I'm here, I want to fucking like, I've staked my flag into the ground, this is who I am. And then like some people will come up to you and be like, I like this guy, he reminds me a bit of me or something like that. Like the internet and the world is a massive place. There'll be more people like you than you think. The more people that can like relate to the real you than you think. Even if you're like fucking really different. That's the beauty of the internet. But if you're just trying to be like what you think your audience wants or like what someone else is or something like that, that's like you're not playing your own game. Like you're leaning into someone else now and they may as well just watch that other person who actually like one of them probably is that person not acting like some bot. What makes an adaptable person and how does one become adaptable? What makes an adaptable person is someone who's been through shit. He's been through like a lot of different environments, like different climates. It could be different workplaces. It could just be like a guy who's been to a lot of schools or like a lot of fucking like different jobs. And he's learned from a lot of different people. He's been around a lot of like different environments that were not necessarily tough, but like evolving. And like he had to learn a bunch of different people and a bunch of different jobs or a bunch of different like situations. And I think that builds that confidence because then when you do go into a situation that might be a little bit difficult, you can like adapt quickly, you know, or might be a situation that's different to something that you've been in before. You can adapt a bit faster versus the guy who might be like quite sheltered. Maybe he's always had like an inside job or he's like sat on the desk all the time. And then someone's like, yeah, let's go and like chop down a tree or something. And he's like, well, I haven't really done that before. Or the guy who might be like a bit of a stiff, like he's again, might be like a lawyer or something like that. And then you're like, let's come down the fight gym and, you know, have a crack or something like that. And he's like, oh, I don't really, I've never really been around guys like that. You know, I know some guys have who are like professionals, they still get around that sort of thing, but a lot of them don't. But yeah, you know, I think to be adaptable, you have to be like clay, like moldable. You have to be able to like mold to your surroundings, which means being able to get on with a bunch of different people, people that you might not agree with. You know, it might be people that you like fucking don't even really like but you can find like a common ground with them or like a mutual thing like one specific thing and be able to like talk to them because maybe like your fitness or something like physical fitness is something that like you can relate to and gel on you know that's that's an important one I find you know a physical fitness one to me is is an easy one to relate to because that means that you might be able to relate to the lawyer or the guy who's like a real like staunch professional but he still trains like he might train like Olympic lifts or something here and there and you can talk to him about that you know I find physical fitness in general like if two people train that's something that they can fucking like have as a common ground and they can build on that versus one who trains and one doesn't it's a bit harder to be relatable alright I gotta find some more questions
more questions. We'll find another one. I'm working with my fucking voice on 50%. So some cunt say that I'm putting on a fucking a fake fucking voice. Can't stress about the weirdest fucking things. What is the real purpose of life? It's going to vary person to person. For me, the real purpose of life is the connections that you build, like along the, along the way. The real purpose of life is heading in your direction. You might have like a vision in your own head of where you want your life to be and what you want and moving more towards that and away from things that you don't like feel good if you do, like morally incorrect things that uh, you think are like fucking bad. I think it's more like being true to yourself. Like for some of you, that might mean being like, you know, religious, like believing in certain religions and like practicing it and also following like that sort of doctrine. And others it might not. You know, uh, and there's someone else it might be like, I want to have a family of three and, you know, I want to like have a wife and all this sort of stuff and a house and we want to like, you know, have a safe environment for my kids and I want my kids to grow up like, you know, and essentially be able to be things, you know, not shit kickers. And another guy might wake up and say, that's not what he wants. You know, he wants to fucking like travel and do all this shit and he doesn't really have plans to have a kid. He just wants to be like the best in his field or something like that. Some people might be in like medicine or a field that's really difficult, like it takes a lot of time to move through. So then they're like very focused on their work and, and families and things like that aren't really on their mind. You know? And that doesn't necessarily mean that one is bad and one isn't. Or one is fucking like better than the other. It's just, to me, life is just moving in your own direction. It's just like sitting down with yourself and like realizing what it is you want and moving more towards that and what it is that you think is wrong and moving away from that. And what it is that you think, like, as you get older, like, what changes you want to see in the world. And that doesn't mean, like, you know, I know guys will be like, oh, in a hundred years or whatever, that doesn't, that'll all fucking won't matter. Like, no one will remember you and no one gives a fuck and all this sort of shit. But that's a shallow, like, that's a dumb way of thinking. You know, you might not be able to fucking, like, save a thousand lives. But that doesn't mean that you can't make, like, someone else or even, like, a few other guys, like, lives better. You know, even if it's by small acts. It's about like, yeah, generally the higher you get or like the more like further along, it's about giving, you know, like giving, it might just be giving information. Like you might be a fucking like amazing mechanic or something like that. And you can teach the next generation, like what you know, it's not fucking like smart to just die with all this information that you have. Like it's pointless. That's fucking stupid, but that's just a waste. You know, it's, it can be just passing down like, you know, your expertise or like your experiences or something like that. And you can change people's lives. It's not about like, you know, be having some massive fucking like tsunami impact on the world. You know, your impact might only be like a pebble in the river. But that doesn't mean that like, you know, you haven't like helped people along the way. You haven't been like a beacon that they can look to and be like, uh, I respect like this part of him. Like that means that I need to fucking like work on my own fitness or something like that. You know, and then they live a better life. You know, versus the guy who just gives up or like bees a whale or like fucking hangs himself because that's generally where all that stuff ends you know people that don't look after themselves it's just they don't live a very good life you know you have to be your own best friend you know the very concept that someone's going to love you more than you need to love yourself that's fucking dumb you know it's that's bullshit too like that would never happen and again you're putting like your happiness and your like you know life essentially in someone else's hands you know when really it should be firmly within your own because only you can make the changes necessary and only you have to deal with the consequences of your fucking like mistreating your body and all this crap. Your hardest journeys in life will always be done on your own. You know, if you're 400 pounds and walking around and people laughing at you when you're in the street, does it really matter if your mum loves you and like your dad loves you and all that other crap? Because those, like, journeys and the pain, like, that, it is only you that has to, like, bear the brunt of it. So, yeah, it's generally, yeah, to me, it just means moving in the direction that you have in your heart. For some of you, that'll mean, like, having to turn off the computers and, like, all the distractions to listen to, like, who you are. 
because some of you get too influenced by like you are on Instagram, you're on all this other stuff and like these big personalities influence you so much. Some of you will be moving into directions that you wouldn't even be happy if you reached. I've said it before with a lot of these guys who have nice things online and then I said it once before, a lot of guys will think that they want to become that person or they want to be like some cardboard cutout person. And I said it before, a lot of that stuff, like where they see the guy flex online or he's like got the nice cars with him and all that stuff. A lot of that stuff's like glimmering dust in the distance. And the closer you get to it, the more you realize it doesn't exist because those people are fake. Like, you know, that's just like a, an image that they're pushing out. Some of them, it'll be an image they're pushing out because they want you to like essentially buy shit off them. You know, so they teach you that you will only be happy if you've got a bunch of stuff. And some people they will be, and some people that won't be what they want. You know, so you need to be able to be self-aware and like critical, the critical thinker, that's why I say it, the self-aware guy who can sit down and be like, actually, I'm moving in a direction that I wouldn't even be happy if I like peaked at. Like, you know, this isn't what I want. Some of you will be like running through girls at the club and like fucking trying to be a fuck boy and all this stuff. But then you have like fantasies about having a like trad wife. And you're doing shit that's exactly the opposite of the being the guy that she doesn't want. You know, you're, you're not like you're just shitting the world up. You're not being the guy that you would want. So that means some of you looking in the mirror and being like, if I was the girl that I want, would I want me? Or if I was like, I'm doing all this crap and I want to be a multimillionaire, like is, am I actually like moving in that direction? Or am I like, you know, bullshitting myself and essentially just fucking around? Because being a multi-millionaire, it's going to require some sacrifice. Especially the earlier you get into it, the less risk and sacrifice you'll have to make to be rich in like 10 years. But if you're getting into it later in life, you'll have to take more chances. Which goes against what they want to do because like the older they get, they need security. Because they can't afford to lose their money if they're like 50 years old because they need to think of retirement. So it gets harder then. It's still possible, but it's just harder. You do a lot of prison stuff. I worked in the prison while you were there and it's all pretty real. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I fucking don't make things up. I'm not here to fucking bullshit. I make up a bunch of crap. I mean, a lot of my stuff can be searched. I've done fucking so many stories that I couldn't really repeat on here. You know, I do have just a ton of stories. Obviously, I've been in a lot of interesting places. Been around a lot of colorful characters. And then since I've been a multi-millionaire, I've done plenty more interesting shit. How does a man get to his highest level and also be vulnerable with a woman? It's a good question. That's a very good question, actually. So you're the guy that's still building his value and you want to be vulnerable with a woman. I agree that is a very good question. A difficult one to answer, but... Vulnerability with women or with men can only come with strength. You can only be vulnerable if there's strength behind it. The US can have all these fucking crazy ideas about, like, you know like 20 genders and all this stuff, because if you disagree, they have all the fucking weapons <laughs> behind them. So it doesn't really matter what you think. Like you can laugh at them and say all this shit that they're like going crazy and they've got like, I don't know, like transsexuals in the military and all this sort of stuff, but you can't fuck around with them. Like, you know, it's one thing to laugh, but if you go to war with them, you will get fucking killed. So that's like, it's just the way it goes. Like, you know, if you want to be like vulnerable with a woman, you can only do it from a position of strength. You can only do it if you have a strong foundation. You know, you can only do it if she respects you. You know, and I, when I say you got to be vulnerable with women, I don't say every idiot. I don't say like every woman that you meet. I don't say like you know you need to show vulnerability to everyone because a lot of people haven't heard that. You know, you have to be able to assess who you can be vulnerable and who you can't. You know, you don't want to walk around as like the guy with the open heart when he walks around because he can get fucking like his heart stabbed you know you can essentially become like a sucker you don't want to have a soft heart I don't have a soft heart at all I don't have a soft heart with anyone unless like you know they, they've earned the like that like privilege 
and I can track that if I have to. So generally, uh, vulnerability comes with strength, it comes with, you know, having the foundation. You don't want to give it away to everyone. You know, if, if it's one woman and she's like, you know, someone that you trust and you've been together or like, you know, she's someone important, you can start to show like your vulnerable side, just start to talk. Like, you know, some for some of you, it'll just be giving compliments and seeing the girl light up around you and being like, actually, like it, it does feel good to fucking like, you know, you got someone you care about. It does feel good to make them feel good. You know, it's not all about like fucking like dominating them. I know a lot of you guys will be obsessed with being some fucking like dorm and then you're only really dominant in the bedroom because the chick doesn't fucking like respect you as much as you think. You know, being dominant in the bedroom when she's like, you know, role playing, it's completely different to like, you know, being dominant outside of the bedroom, like being able to instruct but also lead in your day to day. That's more difficult. Because you have to be able to get the best out of the girl then. You have to essentially be able to make some decisions for her and also think for her and have some foresight into how things are going to actually benefit her or, or benefit you, but also benefit her as well. It can't just be completely one-sided. But then you also have a responsibility for that person. If you do things that fuck them up or fuck their life up and they trust you and respect you and like they're essentially being led by you, that's kind of like leading your platoon off the cliff when you're in the military. It's... Like, you have to live with that now. You know, a good leader leaves people better than he found them. That's part, That's a con, That's like a fucking thing of being a leader. A leader is not some, like, cult thing that just sucks people dry that are around them. That's like a parasite. You know, that's done, like, fucking, like, artificially. You know, a leader builds people. And a leader of a woman builds the woman. He doesn't want someone by his side that's, like, fucking trash or weak or like you know insecure and all this sort of stuff because if you're like around business meetings or things like that or like you know you're going to teach your girl to, to do parts of your business and help out if she's insecure or she's like fucking like you're like essentially keeping her low and her self-worth is kind of like low she's going to need you to help like need you to come to you with fucking everything you know she's going to embarrass you at like dinners because guys are going to be like yeah this girl is like insecure you know it's she's not like protra- protra- projecting any strength you know she's like seems like a beaten dog walking around beside you and then that's like kind of embarrassing and then you don't want the girl that's the other extreme the confident loud mouth you know that's why you have to be able to control you know the the concept the western idea to say to control your girl that that means that you have to be like beating the shit out of her and like fucking you know you're abusing her and like you know you're taking from her and all that crap but that's yeah again that's just being a parasite there's a big difference you know if you're a dom like a dominant guy and you've got like a submissive girl or like you're like essentially the master or like you're the boss or whatever that doesn't mean being a parasite you know that uh, that generally means like you're helping her as well and building her up you have to be able to see attributes in her that need like to be strengthened and you have to be able to like dissect her and be like you know i can see things that like i can see how to make her better you know you have to do that out of a massive abundance the leader can only be in a massive abundance he has to be an abundant leader he has to not be afraid of building his girl up that she's going to leave it you know he has to leave people around him better than they've arrived that's generally what leaders do. So, yeah, to be at the highest level, you just have to keep building yourself up. Then you have to like be very careful who you be vulnerable around, especially women, because with vulnerability comes love. Like if you're vulnerable with a girl and you really like her and like you get connected, you'll feel like you start to connect like spiritually, like almost like souls start to connect if you like on that level and the sex and everything's much better. But that's when you can get hurt. You know, that's when, like, love comes into play and you can get, like, your heart stomped on. So you have to be careful. You know, you don't love... Like, I don't believe in unconditional love. I think that's crap. From my end, I think from a woman's end, I would like to imagine it's good, but maybe that's just me, like, fucking falling into the Disney fantasy. You know, but from my end, I think unconditional love's bullshit. Because I know that the girl that I'm seeing now, she put on, like, 50 pounds and pretty much told me to get fucked I would fucking throw her shit out the window and dump her (laughs) so that's just the game what do you think your lowest point was 
That's a good question. My lowest point was, I was in a club, and me and a friend of mine were doing fucking lines, blow, it's like one or two in the morning. <sighs> Hadn't been like fucking, this is long, not long before I ended up going to, what had it been? Maybe 2014. So I'd be in jail about 18 months after this. But yeah, we, we were in the nightclub, then we had a fucking a doing lines with a friend, and then this girl comes up to me and she was an escort, and I'd known her because like she'd sold dope for me before, and she's like, "Oh, my friends like passed out in the toilets," and I was like, "Oh yeah, okay. Well, why don't you just like get security and fucking send her home? Like, uh, she's not my problem. I don't even know the girl." And then he's like, "She's like, oh no, like uh, she's been doing like lines and that, but we can't wake her up." And it was in the toilets, and it was like. I think it was like a Thursday night or some shit. So it wasn't like a fucking weekend. So it wasn't that busy. Like we used to go out and do blow all the time. So sometimes you don't want to do it at home. So you just go to the club. But we were sitting at a table and then the girl comes up. Yeah. And then she says, yeah, this is passed out in the toilets. So I think, oh, well, like she's fucking obviously like overdosed. Or something's happened. I mean, she's doing lines of blow and now she's fucking can't wake up. That's not normal. So I thought, oh, yeah, she's probably doing, like, ketamine or some bullshit fucking crap. Because that, that was really popular back then. People were taking, like, ketamine pills and things like that. And you get stuck in, like, a K-hole where you can't move if you do too much. But, yeah, it fucks your body up. It's like a tranquilizer. It fucks your brain up as well. It's very cheap. It's meant to tranquilize horses. It's not meant to be, like, done for fun. It's meant to be done very rarely on horses that are really fucked up. But... Yeah, we went to the, to the fucking, oh, my friend, I was like, yeah, you stay here. I'll just, I'll just walk to the toilets and check on this girl. And security were like, you know, I walked past security and, and told them, I was like, I'm going to go in the toilets. There's a girl that's fucking like sick in there. They didn't care that I walked into the toilets, you know, and, and I walked in, walked past a few girls to go into the to girls' toilets. No one gave a fuck. And then, yeah, I walked to the end of the cubicle. There's like the end cubicle there. It's this girl like sitting on the toilet, but like the toilet lid seat was down, like both seats. And she was fucked up. Like I could see that her eyes, if they would open, they would like, you know, pretty much be rolling back in her head. She was like really fucking sick. And then, yeah, it's fucking, we had like, you know, I remember I like moved her, like tried to walk her around, like moved her like out of the cubicle. Cause I was like, oh, she's going to pass out and like crack her head open or something. And then we pulled her out of the cubicle. At this point, there was like a security guard like stuck his head in to see what was happening. And it was like a pretty massive guy. And then he ended up coming in. And then he's like, do you want me to call the ambulance? And then he called the ambulance. And then this chick like essentially fucking died. <laughs> like pretty much like her heart stopped. She was like, you could hear like her breathing was kind of getting really like faint. And then <clears throat> I remember like feeling her pulse, whatever was really weak. And then you could see like her chest, like she was quite thin girl, her chest like rising, but then like not like it was rising as though she was alive one minute and then just dead the next. And we fucking like worked on her. Like we said, we called the ambulance. The ambulance took ages, like 45 minutes or something. And then we worked on her for fucking like pretty much till the ambulance arrived. Maybe it was like 40 minutes, but it was a long time. We tried to resuscitate her and, and she was dead the whole time. Like she didn't like come back. I remember we resuscitated a, me and a security guard and we were both fucked. Like he, he was fucked faster than me because he, like he was big. He was like a muscle, very muscly guy. So he's like shit, like shit out very quick. When you're muscly, like you get pumped faster. So your arms and everything pumps up and it's very hard to do compressions. But me, it was hard to do compressions because I've been taking so much blow. I was like fucked. Like, uh, I felt like fucking garbage. I remember we did it for, like, the whole time. Yeah, we went, like, back to back. Like, I'd go, he'd go. And then probably more me. But we still tried for ages. Like, the whole time. But, like, she was obviously dead. So, for the last probably 20 minutes, we were just cr trying to, like, do what we could. Keep it pumping. But, like, she was, like, fucking long gone. You know, to the point where, like... Yeah, she, she'd lost, like, all colour. Like, she was pretty much done like long done it was almost like and I remember like just trying to like move her a bit 
and she just felt like really heavy to move her in you know it felt like yeah it's like dead weight that they say and then yeah so that, that I remember that was fucking very low point like after that happened I remember I went home and I just couldn't sleep and sometimes like if if I go to go to sleep at night I still like think of the girl still because she was fucking young and that was a big eye that wasn't my fucking coke that she had overdosed on and apparently she overdosed on it because it had fentanyl in the back so the with fentanyl it doesn't need to be much it only needs to be like you know a dose that you can't see and it can sit in just the corner of the bag or like a small part of the bag it's like cross contaminated and then you don't like so people can share the blow and then one person hits one line and it's got fentanyl in it and that's that's all over like if you don't have I think it's snarko or whatever it's called the the spray if you don't get hit with that like within quickly you're fucked doesn't matter if the ambulance is sitting there with like fucking paddles or something to try and resuscitate you they can't do shit your body just shuts down but yeah that was a fucking big low point for me like still think of the girl every now and then just cause she was a kid she wasn't like some fucking like junkie you know she was like seemed like a pretty like normal girl and I think that was a big part of me not dealing anymore like after that happened I think that that was pretty much the end of like my like dealing time I think that I still sold shit but very fucking like much less than I did before that and I think that that was like to a degree part of why I like stopped doing coke myself after that I had another thing like a low point as well I had a fucking gambling addiction and then not long after that probably like four or five weeks after that I went to the casino and I was still doing coke but much less I was doing coke nearly every day before that and I, or probably every day and I was still doing coke probably every day but like half or, or less as much as I was maybe I'm doing like I don't know like a few points a day instead of like I don't know maybe like a gram a day up to a gram I was doing a lot but I would have people around too so I think that's probably pretty skewed to me maybe like half a gram for me a day but still every day it's it's quite a bit of coke when it's strong stuff and yeah so I was at the casino and I was gambling 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 at this point like I knew that I had fucking massive shit in the background like I knew that I was already in trouble like I was going through court and yeah I just fucking I remember I like saw myself saw how skinny I was like I was going to leave the casino after losing like 10 grand and I'd been there for fucking ages like I'd been playing there for like 10 hours time and just because I kept losing but I kept like winning my money back I used to play the poker machines mostly so I'd lose and then I'd win and then I'd lose and then I'd win and I was like 10 maybe 15k and I just took that long to lose it and then as I went to left leave the club like leave the casino it was like 10 o'clock at night or more and then I, they had like mirrors. It was like um, a Treasury Casino in Brisbane. And they had mirrors on the way out where you go out and then you go down the stairs. And I saw myself, like I saw myself in the mirror and I saw like how skinny I'd gotten and I saw my face and it was like kind of like hollowed out. I would have been probably like 76 kilos or something like that at that time. I'm probably like 90 now, 90 or so. And out of the army, I was probably like nearly 100. You know, so I had lost a lot of fucking, like, size. And I just remember seeing, like, my arms and that. I had baggy clothes on, but I could see that I was, like, getting really skinny and small. And then, yeah, I remember on the on the drive home, like, I got a taxi and left. I got a taxi home. And then I just had, like, this big idea where I'm, like, I'm just, like, I'm done with this. Like, I'm finished. Like, compared to that and then the shit that had happened, like, I don't know, six weeks earlier, I was, like, I think I'm done with coke. Like, I don't think I'll take it anymore. And then yeah probably maybe I've used since like taken it since then like snorted it probably a dozen times since then and probably that's like fucking seven or eight years so I, I haven't done fucking like much since then I like to think like I think that it's like slapping the girl in the face or like spitting in her face to do it after seeing someone overdose so fucking like close to me I think that it's I have like a paranoia that the shit that I take would have fentanyl in I think that if it could happen to her, you know, I always like test shit. If I like do lines every now and then, like very rarely, I'll test the shit that I have. I'm like quite paranoid with that now. 
because they know how quick it can come on and when it comes on you can't help yourself you know people get spiked all the time it's, it's the thing that happens now there's a lot of synthetic stuff too that fucks you up so yeah that was a, that was a fucking big low point for me do I think Elon Musk will follow Tate and get banned by the Matrix no I don't know about Elon Musk I'm just speculating I have no fucking like insider information. But you gotta understand that he still has massive investors. Like he still has people that he owes good favors to in good faith. Like he's still he's been a VC like fucking poster child for his whole fucking life. Like every company he's had has had large fundraisers. He still has mass oh, insanely massive backers for Tesla. And everyone knows that comes with strings. Like, you know, it's I don't know about Musk. I just don't know enough about it. I'd just be fucking like rattling off just my own ideas. But I do know that he's got people that have backed him like the whole way. You know, he's got people that have funded all of his ideas all the way through to think that they don't have a say in what he does. <coughs> or they haven't got like, you know, a, a largely invested interest in him doing certain things. Then that's, yeah, too crazy to me. I don't think that fucking like, you know... Elon will get banned I mean uh, he owns a lot of infrastructure I think that to ban him would be a problem I think that he's going to be weaponized for the elections I think that they're going to make him pick a side I think that he's going to be a fucking like maybe moved over to the red side and that might be problematic <coughs> because they'll say like he's using Twitter to fucking like promote one certain side and not the other and then we'll see what really starts to hit him. Like, you know, any scandals or anything that they can, like, run through the media machine to make him look like some fucking monster or damage his company. They probably will. But, yeah, I don't know with Musk. You know, it's it's too... I'm just speculating. Like, it's just a guess. But I do know or assume very highly that they will politicise him. Make him pick a side and use him as a fucking, like, piece on their own board. Because everything's political in the States. Like, that's just their biggest thing. Like, that's what they do. What's my preferred method of turning massive capital wealth into yield? I think that capital wealth into yield, unless you're generating a large amount of income currently, is mostly bullshit. I think that the yield guy... <clears throat> depends, actually. I don't think, like, seven figures is a massive amount of money. Even if you can put like 2M into something like real estate, maybe your yield's like 8%. I mean, like to start with like 150 or something a year. It's really not that much. Versus the guy who can double that in like four years. You know, so I don't know. You know, I think that the best thing for me for yield is, though it is real estate, but I do think that the guy needs to have like the split fucking like allocated portfolio, not focus on yield. Because I think yield is kind of like a fucking like retard play. It's like a play when you're old. I think yield is kind of like shit that you sold. Like, you know, that you need to be like some cash flow king. Kind of like Grant Cardone. Because he is selling like placements into his fund. Which is where he makes most of his money. You know, so I think yield is dangerous for people to fall into. Because inflation's so high. You need to worry about doubling your M's. You don't need to worry about fucking yield. Even if you get 8%, inflation's at like fucking 8%. Even now, it's probably a 10%. But yield is kind of the thing that the broke boy worries about. The smart people are worried about how they can fucking double their money as quick as possible. And as like low risk as possible. And then keep doubling it. And then when they get to a massive amount, like they're in the eight figure territory, then they can sit back and be like, yeah, inflation's eating my money with yield, but I can still like live on an ME. You know Cash flow, the best cash flow for someone is going to be their business. You know, ways that they can like make their business earnings higher while still multiplying their like investment portfolio. That's the best strategy. Because then you have like you can reinvest in your business. That's a good idea. That's how you can generate more cash flow. The guy who buys like, you know, he might have like 5M in crypto and then he moves 5M into real estate. I don't know about that. Unless he wants to be happy with like, you know, the what, 400K a year. If he's at 8%, which is fucking pretty fucking high, you know, a lot of investments are like 5%. I don't 
like a lot of real estate, it's 5%. If he's in commercial, maybe you can get like 7 or 8%. I know a lot of retards will tell you to get like 10% in some like weird country and then the fucking, it's dangerous. Like it's not a safe investment. So yeah, it's, I would never invest in any of these other funds or anything, maybe real estate. Real estate's probably still like 20% of my portfolio. You know, I still passively make like a few hundred K a year now. So I don't really have to do a lot unless I fucking choose to, which I still do. So you need to worry about doubling your money, preserving capital and then like building your portfolio out. Maybe real estate's 20%, maybe crypto's like 30. And then currently you're like 50% in cash. That would make sense to me. And you're waiting to redeploy into crypto or like stocks that are good or other shit. And you're like, how do I double this money in four or five years? Not buy a house that like, you know, and then sit there and be like, oh, hopefully it doubles because housing can take a fucking decent hit for a while. Housing's like in a massive bubble, pretty much worldwide. How to be a good communicator or lead a conversation? That's a good question. I wouldn't say that I'm like some fucking like, you know, salesman that's a massively great communicator. My communication style is just direct which is works well for me because I don't have, like I'm not the suavest guy, like I'm not Mr. Smooth or like some slick guy that's like, you know, has like woos people with his words. I just keep it direct, it works well for me. For you it might not, but I think that you should always like aim to be direct. I think that, yeah, how do you be a better communicator? It's just practice. You know, it's just practicing and fucking working on how you deliver things and seeing people's reaction and like self-awareness, but also being able to read the room and like understanding who's uncomfortable, what they like and, and read people. That's important. But that only comes with practice, you know, and practice can be just practicing around your work. Like, you know, if you want to be better at sales, like for conversation sales, I think that moves over to dating quite well. You know, sales is probably one of the hardest jobs, like the jobs that rely on being a good communicator. Because you have to be able to get people to buy off you. People buy off people they like. That's a major thing. Buy off people they like or people they respect. Yeah, but both are quite similar. So yes, yeah, it's going to be practice. Leading a conversation is just going to be leading the conversation. You know, it's it means that you've got like an idea where you want the conversation to go and you're like moving towards it. It's like a process. You have to have that process in your head. Kind of like a, a drawn out map. And you're like, here, I'm going to say this. And she's going to say either this or this, but I'm ultimately moving it towards a goal. And your goal with women should always be to like, shoot your shot. It shouldn't be to just have a bunch of fucking conversation, like pointless shit. Like when you have a conversation, do you have a purpose of the conversation or do you just like talk garbage? You know, a lot of people just talk for the sake of talking, like talk a bunch of low value, like crap into the universe. And it just gives what words they say low value because they just say a bunch of crap instead of the guy who has like a, an agenda behind what he says and he's like thinking like what, what he wants to achieve from this. Explain the meaning behind your tattoos, especially the neck one. The neck one's six webs for six years. And that's six years of my life that I lost in the fucking system. So that's what that means. It's got six years and it's got one on the outside because I lost another year on the fucking, in the army hospital. I had seven years where I couldn't really do anything. I had two, nearly two in prison, 14 months in army hospital, so that's three years gone. And then I had another three on parole, where three years parole is still, still considered prison. You're just in the fucking, like, out in public, but you can't do jack shit. I had those three years where I couldn't really fucking associate with anyone. You know, I had the most conditions that you can have, especially the first year, I had a GPS bracelet. I had fucking parole trying to breach me at every fucking turn. I'd have the GPS bracelet and have to stand next to a power socket and, and charge my leg. I couldn't take it off. It was like a massive box and it would go flat. Like it lasts like eight hours <laughs> and then flash and I'd have to charge it again. So yeah, it was quite fucking annoying, but that's life. I had the thing go flat twice on break twice I'd go to the fucking prison they had like a prison but then they had this little corrections center there that we have to get it replaced so it was just a pain in the ass non-stop
How much time do you think is left until breaking free from the matrix is no longer an option? It's a good question. I think that with time, it'll get harder. I think that if you don't look out, look out for your like fucking kids and don't set your kids up like as best you can. Now, like that's why it's going to be a lot harder in the future. I went on my AI fucking rant and like, you know, gene editing and things like that. If you don't have money to afford like that sort of technology, you're going to be at a massive disadvantage, especially your kids. Once gene editing is available, like regularly, like widely available, how will your kids ever be able to compete? If their dad's rich and their dad can get them all the fucking upgrades and you're some broke boy that's like, oh no, I just want like uh, be Mr. Natural. It'll be like the Mr. Natural training next to some fucking trend head. And one's as massive and the other's not. Like it's, you won't be able to compete. Money will buy much more in the future than it does today. Because as tech advances, you'll be able to do much more with money. Money will mean that you can live like fucking probably twice as long as the broke boy. And all other shit. How did I look in high school? Oh, I looked like shit. I had fucking no no money. Like my parents didn't really have money, so I never had nice shit. I had no... I was fat. I had fucking bad psoriasis, which means that you've got like scaly skin from here to here. So I used to get fucking like flakes of skin and shit on my shirt. So yeah, I fucking look like a disaster. I played professional video games in my high school. So yeah, I look like complete shit. You know, so, so that's my starting point was the, I had to fucking like get real with how I looked and that it was important to try and look good. That doesn't mean looking like a supermodel, but like looking like the best you can look like. Some of you will be, have like an ugly face. Some of you will have a handsome face, but you can only like find the look that works best for you. You can only like buff yourself up so much. But you should still do that, you know, because there's no advantage to being like fucking like not pushing the best version of yourself into the world. You know, it's, yeah, it's that's pointless. You want to do what you can. Opinion about cancellation of Tate. My opinion is that, yeah, it's, it's bullshit. I don't believe the charges. I think that a lot of it is, from what I've read, they've charged him with a bunch of crap. So they're trying to fucking like set him up so that they can, he sacrifices. So like he only takes one charge, but then they use it to assassinate his character. That's pretty fucking standard for, for the fucking like matrix or establishment. That's generally what they do. So then he thinks, oh, I've had a win, but they still use it to assassinate his character in the future and say he was guilty of this. And then they use it again to try and get him for something else and be like, he's got a history for this now. So that's generally what they do. I think that they're cancelling him because they don't like the message of strong men. They don't like people telling the men that they can be fucking anything they want. Like the Tates are about hope. The Tates are like trying to fucking like program men in a different direction to what like the monopoly of information and the Matrix are trying to push them towards, like being confused soy boys. You know, the, the Tates generally push them to be like decisive and know what they want. And like, you know, become better versions of themselves and like stronger. So yeah, it's, that's a problem. What else? We'll go one more. It's the best piece of advice you ever received. Best piece of advice I've received is probably from Kevin Samuels. He told me, we used to sit down and talk to him. We probably talked for like 10 hours. I was paying him. It's like paid consultations. But the, originally it was like a low fee because he, he had like 80K followers or 100K followers or whatever. And then the last few times he was like quite famous. So I paid him like 10K. I just gave him a gift. I was like, here's 10K, you know, for like the couple of times that we talked. I gave him like 10K. So his time was very valuable. But he was someone who like talking to him for an hour was like talking to someone else maybe for like 20 hours he was very good at getting like very to the point he was extremely direct and his advice that he gave me was it doesn't matter what people say you know it, it doesn't matter if people like judge you or, or try and fuck you around or like you know you give your story online and then people like shit talk you and things like that not to stress about people that don't pay your bills was a big one you know, if, if these people that jump on and troll you were like, you know, you're afraid of like what they're going to say, you don't to shoot your shot because you're like, fuck, if I miss, like someone I don't even like is just going to fucking say I'm a retard. You know, that you can't worry about that. You can't like let that like paralyze you. 
some of you will be like afraid to take that chance because you're scared of like what, what others will think. And especially if you don't make it, you know, I've had some fucking like massive humiliations in my life. You know, I've had the, I've had my mum sitting in the back of the courtroom while I was like being my DV charges were being read out and they were pretty fucking extreme. You know, you can read them on more. So I know what it's like to have like, you know, you know, like dirty laundry aired out for the whole fucking world to see. You know, so you have to be not fearful of your fucking, like, what other people are going to think of you. Especially when they don't pay your bills or, like, they, they like they wouldn't give a fuck about you if you were homeless. Like, sitting on the street. You know, you have to take shoot your shot. And if you miss, that doesn't mean that it's game over for you. You know, you have to get in the habit of shooting. Like, pulling the trigger. Because that's the only way that you're going to get better. And you can, like, recalibrate. Like, you know, the shooter who, like, shoots a three-pointer and misses, and now he's calibrated, so he can be like, all right, I missed there, so I can, like, recalibrate. You know, when you shoot, go to the range and shoot, or, like, you're shooting targets or something, like, your first few shots can miss, and then you calibrate the scope or, like, calibrate your own, like, grip and, like, you know, like, aim. But you can only calibrate it often after you've shot. You know, like, often I'll shoot, and the first time I shoot, I'm not great. But then the grouping just gets tighter and tighter as I go further and further. Cause like my brain gets like tuned in and everything starts to work but when you don't shoot like you miss all of that and that's where the fucking growth is man like missing it's sometimes the misses like I think about still like they're some of the fondest memories you know the, the times like you know where you do like take the fucking like I don't know take the L you know like you're the guy who essentially like gets the fucking like custard pie thrown in your face and it's embarrassing. Like, you're standing there and it's like, fuck. Like, everyone saw that. But that's, like, where the growth happens. You know, that's where you're like, fuck, I never want to feel like this again, so I'm going to, like, do the work now. I'm going to get fucking serious. You know, that's where the changes start. So I do, I understand that that's the advice that he gave me, which is the best advice. And I use it now. I've, like, sculpted my own version of it where I tell the anons and things like that they need to take the mask off and, like, face the world as they are. Even if they're not perfect, they can, like, you know, own their position and fucking, like, change and get better. You can't get better as an animal because you're not facing the world as you will. So that's my fucking take. That's my take on these today, lads. My voice is fucking, like, shot. There'll be some retard in the comments say that it's shot from putting on a voice or something. And it's not just shot from fucking having a fucking cold from the air conditioning. But, yeah, that's my take, lads. I'll get back. I'll do a fucking number two. Alright lads, till next time.